we go. We are live. Welcome. It's just bodybuilding live from West Coast Iron, courtesy of Mutant. Of course, we got the flag. We got Dusty Hanshaw, fresh out of the shower. And amazingly enough, Mutant brought Scott McNally up to set all this up for us and uh, get this live episode under our belts. This live in-person studio-esque vibe that we have going on this is weird you know i feel like we should like have leather like recliners <laughs> yeah and, you yeah. know and then yeah and then start you know multi-camming you know we're almost there we're almost, we're almost there. there we could Maybe have multi-cammed some, uh, just you know it's yeah. a little much for the first time what would what, what, you remember, remember when rogan moved and everyone criticized his new sta- st- studio they were yeah. like oh yeah. it's, it looks like a weird spaceship in there yeah and then he changed it so it looked more texas so there's like wood behind him now yeah. yeah yeah i'm wondering what would we do with our wall you know it would evolve there's no question it about would evolve that. Yeah. okay so like share subscribe comment obviously we're live so you guys can actually follow along with us watch the show live we are going to be doing questions at one point it's going to be chaos yes but i'm ready for it i'll follow along any questions you guys post i'm going to do my best to uh to save those but uh, we had some topics and and and, and then i forgot to say and oh which left me not going ring the bell there we go so but i did i got stuck on the comment thing you did you, you I, went i went. sidebarred so it's his um, first time yeah so we're 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 back on track remember i am mutant.com big ron 20 dusty 20 you can use our codes for 20 percent off i am mutant.com huge supporters of the show and of course this whole trip is you know this is a mutant trip so basically what's going on dusty you guys are all up here to film a bunch of content. Yeah, we have the we have the full week. Um, came in actually, I got in at one thirty in the morning. That was a shit show. I can't say that. Um, but came in, and now it's it's training videos. This obviously the new gear. We got new, new swag. Run. I mean, new awesome. swag. So we got to do all these like videos and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, new duffel bag. It's, it's exciting. We got a ton of good stuff, and uh, the best part is that the whole team comes out. So. Uh, the plan is to get you guys a, li- a live view of what's going on on all of our social media individually, and then you're going to see all the professional work that Nick and Constantine put up that actually makes us look good. And and, we got, and Shreddy films too. Oh, he's in on too. Yeah, we got a double team thing going on. Oh, so we got, I've always wanted to be nice. double teamed by there them. There we go. There um, we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We got everyone. We got everyone. They got and they got Jason Breeze. Yes, shooting, shooting us. the stills. Yep. So okay, Jason walks in. He sees a photo on the wall of me. Right. And he's like, oh. My work. And I was like, oh, yeah, you took that. <laughs> That's awesome. It's funny. So, yeah, we're happy to be here, man. You know, how, how, tell us about your delay. You were delayed. Well, I woke up yesterday morning, and very first thing I got an email that says that my flight is 90 minutes behind, which is no big deal. It's my first flight. But the follow up was that my total flight time was now 16 hours behind. Oh, God. And I was going to come in today at 12.30 p.m. Because you're going to miss your connection. Yeah. So I'm like, that's not going to work. Uh, I ended up actually switching airports, drove up to Charlotte, flew out of there, um, flew into Denver, which was smooth sailing. Everything was good there. Uh, but that's when the, the extended delays began again. And there was actually a point when I flew into Denver that I thought I was going to miss my flight here as I was texting you guys. Yeah. Uh, my flight was supposed to leave at like 7, 12 p.m. And at 7, 20, I'm still on the tarmac looking at it. And then right as I'm about to text you guys that I'm screwed, I get the, your next flight was delayed text oh. come through. Oh. So <laughs> it all worked out. Then it you was, you uh, know there's at least like 15 people off that plane that are on the next plane. That's why it's late. Like yeah. they're holding it for you. Yeah. 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 So it was good. We came in late last night and uh, now it's right to business. So I'm stoked that we got this done because I was, I was actually nervous. I was looking at the time. I'm like, well, I'm supposed to land yeah. after we do this show. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, That's not going to work. Yeah. What about you, Scott? How was your trip up? I couldn't ask for anything smoother. I yeah. mean, we, uh, other than the fact that I was really excited uh, I was excited to come out, you know, because yeah. you guys have done this kind of thing before. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I'm getting to see, like, there is literally right now, like, Jamie the Giant's down there doing videos and stuff, and Dana's down there shooting video. Like, there's stuff going on that's really cool right now. Yeah. I'm getting to hang out with everybody, you know, over at and, the Mutant and, Mansion. And I mentioned, I was like, oh, by the way, Cass G is here, too. 
Yeah, I saw it when I watched it. It's like one of the best uh, wellness girls in the world just happens to be here training (laughs) because that's what you get at this gym. It's pretty cool. So So that said, when I looked at the flight options, the first option was like, well, if I take this option, I'll get there the soonest. But I also have to get up at 4 a.m. And I was like, get that one. Take it. So. (laughs) <laughs> Yesterday, I don't even know how many hours the day was. Like everything went really smooth, but it was a long day. So I don't know, but we all made it. So I'm yeah. pumped. And, we're and I, the thing I'm happiest about Scott is that they let you in with all your guns. Yeah, I, what? Shh, don't yeah, don't they got to keep that under your head? But uh, but I know that oh, you just you just get to the board and you just say I'm American. I'm American. And it's fine. It's uh, my yeah. emo- emotional support gun. Right. Yeah. Right. They guns. let you bring yeah. one. Oh, yeah. One. There's yeah. only one. Yeah. One. Yeah. one. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Well, it has to fit. It, it has to fit under the seat. Yeah. <laughs> right. Or in the overhead. He brought the folding one. Brought brought the one. <laughs> <laughs> no guns, but I'm doing all right. Okay. I got you guys here. So okay. Everything goes down. You know. I just when you when you get to the Canadian. has a gun. When you get to the oh yeah. When you get to the Canadian border, <laughs> you have to trade your emotional support gun for an emotional support vape. Yeah. <laughs> right? You're in Canada now. Yeah. So the dynamic shifts. Everyone's a little calmer. Yeah. yeah. Right? You know? Yeah. So it's good. It's good, though. We got a good vibe. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy about it. And, uh, um, you know, they got you in the house, too. Yeah. yeah. Tell them about that. We got two houses. So I'm hanging out at the athlete's house. And that's Shelby and Dana and Jamie. In me, am I missing anybody? Nope, no Dusty. one. <laughs> Dusty, well, Dusty just got <laughs> that in. That was there a last, last night. minute, a last yeah. minute edition. Yeah, I didn't even wake up last night when you came in. Yeah, like, I was out. I was out for like <laughs> six hours straight. I didn't move, um, and it's awesome. Like everybody, so the team from Mutant brought in like all the food that everybody wants. So it's like I, I just cooked my normal breakfast this morning. Yeah. Like, normally, when you travel, you don't, you, you don't get a chance to like actually eat what you normally would eat. And how about the groceries? They're amazing. Like yeah. they, you gave them a list, didn't you? I didn't give them a list, so I'm just. Oh, you just mooching off groceries. everybody else's groceries. <laughs> <laughs> they brought enough like eggs for everybody, yeah, and yeah, chicken yeah. for everybody, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. So, but it was, you know, was I didn't fantastic. send a list in. I'll just find food. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the beauty though. Like when you, it's funny with Scott because I was talking to Nikki when you're watching your your page and stuff. I'm like, you forget because I've been doing this for so long. Yeah. That this is normal, and I'm like. Oh shit, Scott's like super stoked to do no, all this, this. And you're like, oh, okay, thing. this is the yeah. coolest thing. He, he said a few things yesterday. He's like, man, I really treat you good. And I'm like, oh yeah, I really don't. I just take complete advantage of these guys. Just, I'm so used to it. No, it's cool. It's cool to see um, a company that really respects bodybuilders, is what that translates right. to me. Right. It's not fend for yourself. Yeah. Well, that in a world too where it's like, you know, bodybuilders aren't even thought of as like the first class people at a contest anymore. You right. know what I mean? Valid. Right. So it's like to see a company that really treats bodybuilders with respect still. It takes me back to it takes me back to like the first time I was at a hardcore gym and I was training as a competitor. I got a new gym membership at a powerhouse and they were like, "Oh, you're a competitor? Oh, well, we'll give you a discount." Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. And it's like that was a different world. The they were like, "Oh, here. Years. And here's a free coffee cup. Take this with you." Right. You know what I mean? It was cool. <laughs> right, it was right. cool. And yeah. it made you feel special. And it made you feel like bodybuilding was special. You yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah. And that gym supported you. And yeah, that goes, uh, yeah. digs deep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. What are we, 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 how many people? I can't see the numbers. Oh, gosh. We're, we're doing yeah, good. So we're like 86 people at okay. the moment. So we okay. need you guys to hang here. And then we need more people to join us. Maybe we need to get Chris Aceto back or something. Yeah, we'll, you but know. you know what? I was very happy that everyone saw the internet issues as like a charming yeah. effect of the Aceto <laughs> interview. People who liked Aceto expected it. Like almost like we had to run it through a failure filter. An yeah. internet <laughs> failure filter. So it was a, a, a proper Aceto interview. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like one guy even listed it like jokes. Uh, you know, truths and internet issues, classic Aceto. <laughs> like, he had it broken right <laughs> yeah, down, you know? Yeah. Yes. So it was good. It was yeah. good. It was but nice. uh, we had a topic, didn't we, Scott? We brainstormed one last night. Nice. Which topic? The d- the dangerous one. Oh, Is yeah, that the yeah. One we yeah, we were talking about, uh, I think it was good, too, man, because you were, we were just sitting down talking. And well, you had said, I don't know what's we, going on. Yeah, was, yeah well, that's okay. <laughs> Dusty, we're in the air. We're so in the air. primarily, Dusty's at his best when he doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> <'cause>, <laughs> Just the majority of my life, so, I feel comfortable. So <laughs> we, we were sitting and we were talking about the Arnold. And we yes. were like, how can we talk about the Arnold? Because we need an opening topic, even though we're 15 minutes in. 
Yeah. We, so we, we, we got to talk about the Arnold, but we don't want to be like boring old, like, okay, well, who's Rami going to do against this? You know, we wanted to kind of approach it with, with a couple of ideas. And one was the most, who's the most yeah. dangerous bodybuilder of 2023? Yeah. And are they in the Arnold? Ooh. And we're thinking also another side topic is what will be considered massive impactful success for Sean Clarita at this show what placing what placing does he have to get for it to be like holy shit that yeah. this 212 guy is I have all my answers he has all the answers. Yeah, I have. I just See, right. that's They're my why. Answers. That's why he's best unprepared because it doesn't doesn't you know you know you didn't have time overthink. to over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a dangerous thing. So, okay. So starting with Sean, I think Sean makes top five. The game has changed because you got to remember. I know a lot of people are like. Well, there's only so many guys. Think of who the top five is. Yeah, we went through that. So who do we have? We got Rami. Yep. Nick. Samson. Um. Andrew Jack, with Aceto, with by the Aceto way. and <laughs> yeah. Psycho and Chris Psycho Lewis. Yep, right. Clarita. Yep. And then who else is on the list? Akeem. Which, by Come the way, on. if you saw his pictures today, Akeem's scary already. Yeah, I did. So he kept dieting. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Assume. And yeah. Kamal. Yep. Is that the seven? Is there anyone else? I feel like there's a couple we've missed. I'll that, get up. That we're already talk. they're already yeah. locked in there. So so top five there means that he's got to beat. Like, you know, you got Akeem, you got uh, Samson was sixth, you got uh, Andrew Jack was seventh. So he beats any of those guys. Yeah, now you're in the top six at the Olympia. Right. At the Open. Right. Which so still irritates me they didn't let him do that. I'm going to say it one more time. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been something else, eh? How would he have looked in that lineup? Because, damn, that's a well, sidebar. Well, Chris, Chris brought... The, I loved Chris's explanation of how when the call-outs happen, it changes who you're looking at. Right. And it's very true because I feel like in the Olympia, with the call-outs the way they were, he would have looked really, really strong. Uh, whereas to me, that's why I said top five, because standing with the who I consider the most oh, likely Bonac. the top four. Bonac. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. Lucas. Bonac. Of course Lucas How knows. do you forget Bonac? Thank you. Um, Lucas Think about everything. that, though. Like, think about the size of the guys that are in that top, let's say, three. Right. They're all 5'10 plus and pushing three bills. Right. That alone makes it a – just standing amongst them, you yeah. you know, it's like ask a, a four-year-old what, which thing doesn't go. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so I think that, that that's why I put him in there. And like you said, if he beats one of those guys, like it's a nightmare. If he beats any of them, it's, I mean, you know, that's a crazy show to go into. I mean. But let's think about, let's think about consistency. Who on that stage is more consistent than Sean? Yeah. Oh yeah. We know. We know he's going to be an incredible. He'll be shape. perfect. You know. Yeah, there's no question He'll about be perfect. that. perfect. Here's yeah. another thing. How does Kamal do against Clarita not having to come down to two twelve? Oh yeah. Because now you got Kamal at two what two twenty seven or yeah. whatever he's yeah. going to be. Mm -hmm. And you know, I know that Sean beats him in the two twelve. Right. But now we we we're going to see like. What happens when you cross that line on the scale? Absolutely. Because, like, you know, Derek went up, you know, Hottie went up, everyone went up, and they changed. Yeah. So how does the game change for Sean there? Yeah. Right. Valid. I just Fair think enough. it's fascinating. I can't wait to see him standing in the lineup. I keep thinking of, of Lee Priest standing next to Paul Dillett. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, oh, I love that. I just yeah, saw yeah. that I'm in like, my mind. I love, I love that, that era, you know, where they'd be doing the call-outs like Ronnie, Nasser. Paul, yeah. Lee. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're like, oh, shit. All of them are killers. Right. Yeah. And yeah. then he comes out and you know, he's in the mix, right? Yeah. And, and, it, you know, and everyone else is behind that group. So it, it, uh, it's exciting for me because, you know, I, I know there's guys saying, oh, if Sean places, you know, top two or three, that means that 212 is irrelevant now. We don't even need it. Yeah. You know, there's guys saying that. So, so we also missed. Now I don't know if this is updated or not, 
But the list at the website says uh, Justin Rodriguez. Justin oh, yeah, Rodriguez. Justin oh, too. Jeez. Fuck. And then, <laughs> and then Patrick miss. Moore that we didn't see last year. Is he going to be there? That's awesome. Okay. I, I'm a huge Patrick Moore fan. Yes. I, I know that when he previously competed, I mean, we knew he needed more size, but he came to the sport from boxing, and he had never really, like, bulked. No. So I'll be interested to see, well, what happens after he takes some time to grow. Just right. training. Yep. And is he working with Chris? I'm not sure. He didn't mention it, so I don't think so. Okay. Because he know, wouldn't mention it on the show. Okay. The okay. Okay. They used to. Okay. Yeah. Well, I know that... I know that on heavy muscle, uh, Dave said something about uh, uh, Patrick having to- did he tear a muscle or something, and uh, Chris said no, it, it was minor, and so he he was up to date at least. Oh, with, okay, with what's could going be. On. Okay, but, yeah, that's not okay. I won't put any words in people's mouths. Okay, so so who do we think is the most dangerous bodybuilder of twenty twenty three? I still, th- I mean, Derek. Derek. Derek Derek and then my my honorable mention because we'll see if he can do it again is Samson. I mean, he's the guy who can really shock you the most. Derek, you now know. Um and I know obviously people argue you know Samson too, but the gap between where he was and where Derek was last year is it was decent. Um if he can close that, then who knows. Uh and, and on that note, I have to add a little extra love seeing him get signed to a long-term contract with Hostile. I thought that was awesome. So, so I actually wanted to mention that primarily when, you know, I, I, I'm going to go with Samson as my most dangerous bodybuilder of 2023 because I think he has more, um, I think that his ascent is faster than anyone else's right now. Mm-hmm. Like Derek made the big jump, but that to me is kind of a jump he was holding back yeah. right. anyways, you know. Samson's like on a rocket ship. And I, I think that Nick already had his big blast, his oh, big yeah. rocket yeah, blast, yeah. you know. I think Samson is on his right now, which coming from the Arnold to the Olympia, I couldn't believe the difference because oh, I nuts. saw him at both shows in person. Yeah. And and I couldn't believe the difference. And that rate of improvement is what scares me. And then the next most important thing to remember is um, the fact that Fuad believes in him so much and signed him to a four-year deal and is paying him more than any other hostile athlete ever, which means it includes Nick, yep. right? Yeah. All those things tell me that Fuad is seeing pictures I'm not seeing. <laughs> right. Yeah. And yeah. Fuad's very smart, and he knows what his brand is all about, and his brand is, you know, hardcore brand. So Samson must be... I know he loves Samson's work ethic and, yeah. and what Samson's been able to do. So the fact that that happened tells me that there's a lot of value there. Because obviously Fuad would know him as a person really well and all True. that stuff. And True. that's he part of it. Him. People think of the physique, but how's, how's his head? How's his work he ethic? hold it together. And I know that Fuad has said things like, man, that guy, like, he had a really bad year last year, you know, with the travel. And it can, you didn't even get, didn't even get quarantined and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. a bunch of shit happened to him. Yeah. And then he made all that improvement. And so I just think he's, a, I, I'm going to say Samson's the most dangerous bodybuilder of 2023. I could see that. I, he's, I can see he's that. on he's on a roll and he's got so much behind him. He's made so much incredible progress in such a short period of time. Yeah. You can't help but ask yourself, like, well, what is he going to do next? Yeah, you know, what what more yeah. is he capable of? Yeah, yeah. Because that was a pretty short period of time to have made some some pretty substantial. Yeah, changes. huge gains. So well, I think people leave out too on on the flip what Fuad's support means to him. It's very easy to sign someone for a year, two years. When you know they've got your back to that level, and which Fuad included just because people love to piss and moan about anything, the contract can also be adjusted if he does better. Like he's uh, not locking yeah. him in, yeah. which is embarrassing to me that anybody even thinks that, but I know how the world works. But I think as an athlete, I, mean, I know, Ron, you, you had the same thing this year. It is different when a company says, oh, you're part of the fam, you're part of the fam, and here's your one-year deal versus you're part of the fam, here's your four-year deal. Yeah. That's like, oh, okay, you mean that. That's Got pretty it. cool. You know? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and maybe, too, I mean, because cause, uh, Nick was with Hostel and then he, he wasn't, or, you know? Yeah, yeah. Maybe there was a matter of, like, maybe from Fuad's perspective, business-wise, he was like, hey, I don't want to maybe do things yeah. the way I did last time. Yeah. I'm I'm step not, up harder, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That stuff, you know, he, he probably has, you know, 
you know, it's things are different now. You're planning content so far in advance. Like if you sign a guy to a one year deal, it's hard to like yeah. do a bunch of crazy, you know, the stuff you want to do with them. Yeah. You know? So hmm. How's how's that we got questions? We're gonna do some questions. I've seen What's some rolling on? through, they're actually pretty we, solid. We got a we got a really good one here too. I do want to point out to you guys. So we had a wider angle lens at first, and it would have made Dusty, the guy in the middle, look even smaller. Somebody said, Scott's out angling Dusty. I want to give you guys some perspective here. <laughs> this is me. Sit, like, sit up. Give me like, a, yeah, like you're almost like you're front relaxed here. This is me sitting next. And you still, and I'm on the edge, so it doesn't work. But I, like to be, I like to be the centerpiece is, here. It's nice. Dusty's got a lot of size. Yeah, that's all I got to say, go. guys. There we go. I don't know if you guys can hear me. I'll, I'll look through this. Do you... Uh, can we, can we, while I look for some questions, can we Yeah, show here, hand on? me those shirts. I want to oh, show yeah. those shirts. Yeah. We we were going to put them on, but we couldn't logistically figure out how to put them on. And we got the <laughs> Mew Mutant gear we got to wear. And, and then we got the white background. And I know the Hollywood rules don't wear white on set when you're an extra. I know all that stuff. But <laughs> just for shits and giggles, I think this is mine and this is Scott's. Oh, this is mine. This is Scott's. Here. Hold that right. up, buddy. What, what do you got? So here? we got a um, member have... made us a shirt before I met Dusty. Okay. <laughs> before I met Dusty, and we're gonna we, we 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 had a little fun with the before I met Dusty idea, and one of the members made us shirts and thought you guys need to do a segment, <laughs> a segment before I met Dusty, and uh, and I thought that maybe we could show the shirt and when we could. We could tell a few things. Uh, we come up with a few things, Scott, that we we could talk about from before we met Dusty. You know, <laughs> that's a great idea. That's a great <laughs> like idea. I, and while we talk about this, guys, I'm going to start going through the questions and the comments you've posted. Yeah. Post us up some questions, especially. I'm going to request some good over and unders. Good over oh, and unders. Use okay, good over overrated and underrated. Underrated. Okay. All right. So I said before f that someone really pointed out that it was an important fact. I'd never paid for sex before I met Dusty. <laughs> and it's and, it, and he didn't pay me for the record. I want to, again back to the growth hormone situation. This is not what it is. See, isn't that interesting how it sounds if you word it that way? Right? It's all in the wording. Yeah. Very cautious with like, that. Like, you know, that the, the technically that's a true fact. It doesn't tell the whole story, but it sounds hilarious to me. It's much funnier just, if you just leave it like that. I was like just that. saying it while I was driving. I was just saying things before I met Dusty. I never smoked crack cocaine. Right? <laughs> and he just leave it. Just, he just, he just leave just walk it. away. Just he walk just out walk the door. Yeah. And then it just leaves the person. They're like, who is this Dusty guy? Yeah. You know? I like that. You know you're a lot mean? better at it than me. Like, I can't think of any good ones like that, but you're right. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, and it's true. You know, before I met Dusty, um, I never changed the price tag on the meat at the supermarket <laughs> and then tried to buy the expensive steak. <laughs> That's just good before business. Before I right met there. Dusty, yeah. I never did that. Yeah, I never and did that. Before the reality I met is, him. you still might not. I but, yeah, you know, I still don't you, now. But, but, it's, you, but before I met him, I never, did, never, never did that. Never even thought about it before. Yeah. You know, there's all sorts of things you could do yeah. with that. That's good. You know. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. On, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's painful. You know? All right. I'm going to see what we had here for over and unders, too. Um, I saw it. Uh, okay. Here we go. Oh, gosh. I don't know. Oh, that's we, easy. Yeah. Well, hold on. Let me see if I can bring it up. Because look at We hit that button, Dusty. And boom. Whoa. Pops right up. Yeah. That's how you do it. Jake, overrated, underrated, Harley Davidson as a brand. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna let Ron run this first, then I'll correct him when he's done. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was in college, I didn't fit. I'm a college dropout. But when I was in college, I did a marketing <laughs> research paper on Harley Davidson and how they like had their did. brand saved. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Again, <laughs> how does this happen? How? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so their brand was in trouble, and then someone came in and bought them. I can't remember who it was, but someone came in and bought them, and they were like, the problem is you guys are just making motorbikes. You have to make merchandise. You have to turn this into a brand, like a lifestyle. This has to be a way of life. It right. shouldn't just be a bike. You guys are just making bikes. That's why you're not doing well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were like, you need to make boots, and we got to make leather jackets, and we got to make all that blah, blah, blah. And then Harley became like a brand, and it like expanded, and the, this, the company that came in and took them over, like, you know, turned it into a, a lifestyle. It's a way of life now. Some people, that's their whole life is the brand and what it represents and what they ride, and they did an amazing job on it. 
So are they over or under? Um, see, I don't know enough about the quality of their I mean, motorcycles. This I, sounds pretty accurately what's a brand, rated though. to be there. You can't yeah. say accurately rated. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. And they sound pretty accurately <laughs> rated. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't fuck. It's hard. It's I, it's, I feel like I'm stabbing at things I'm not really fully aware of. I'm going to say... He said he's not aware of. He wrote a report on it yeah, but that was years in 1967 yeah, when he was in college. <laughs> um. Okay. <laughs> let's say... Let's say... I'm going to say... I'm going to say they're overrated. He's going overrated. Just, overrated. Just and, I, and, I knew, and I knew he would say that, which is why I said correct. Just, yeah. just, just but here, because... But here's, but here's why, though. It's actually not like... You nailed why I think that they are underrated, which is... Even though I own now three Harleys, um, they do not make the best motorcycle there is. They don't. Yeah, okay. I they really don't. Yeah. But they are the brand. So yeah, it's one of those things where it, it's like it's a cult to be a part of. Like literally, when when Nikki and her friend, our friend Daniel, started getting into riding, they decided they wanted to ride. They were both looking at Indian motorcycles, which are fantastic bikes. It literally took one trip to the Harley Davidson dealership and doing their class to realize that they had to join the cult. Right. Like you, you just, you have to. So, and like you said, the clothes, everything else, I look at a brand who has went for this long and continued growing to the point where I see shirts and I always ask myself when I see someone with a shirt on, do you own the shirt or do you own a bike? Do you right. own both? Right. And the chances are they own the shirt. Right. Yeah. Because the majority yeah. of their yeah. money is actually branding. So they don't make as much, they make way more money selling merchandise than they do motorcycles. I feel like the majority of people I know that ride a Harley now are at least 40 something years old, successful business people. And they're like, I always wanted a Harley. Yeah, the game yeah. has changed because the, the money it requires to, uh, <laughs> to to get into the game is more than most want to. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I do think it's really fascinating though to see because as I've stepped in more, and I'm actually the anti. So. I never wanted to be that person that like let their hobby become them. Right, right. I got right. a Harley shirt. I got my Harley hat. I got, you know, I own. Uh, As he sits here, fully three, branded. I would yeah. totally different. <laughs> <laughs> when Harley pays me, yeah, 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 yeah. No, but you know what I mean. It's one of those things where it's like, I own two hats and a t-shirt. Right. And the majority of the time, I I always wear coincidentally, but uh, Flag North Fail makes really comfortable, warm jackets you mentioned that that yeah, i wear yeah, all the yeah, time because yeah. leather to me is uncomfortable i own one it's right. a 700 dollars jacket i never wear but right right yep so i'm going i'm going of course underrated but on the merchandise side not the motorcycle side i i i had one guy tell me he, he was a harley owner and he goes yeah i love my harley he goes but he goes there's a lot of great motorcycles out there that don't there's some great companies that don't get the the love they deserve. There's some oh, smaller yeah. companies yeah. making great bikes, and he was telling me that, and I was just like, "Oh, it's interesting," you know. Yeah. I I have a side question then. So if Harley isn't the best motorcycle, yeah, who actually makes the yeah, best? Who's, who's the best? It depends on what you want, right? Because there's there's certain things, and and I'm an infant in my knowledge. I've always ridden bikes since I was like 15. Was my first my first car was a motorcycle because you could drive them alone. Um, so I've had Harleys since I was 16 with my first Harley. Wow. I never really knew anything about them, but now you start researching. And for example, like they, a lot of the bikes have a shock on both sides of the bike. Yeah. And you start talking to people who really know their shit, not me. And they explain why a single shock in the middle would make so much more sense okay. for turning and, and all those types of things. So a lot of other companies actually do those details and have a lot more. But I can tell you this, and that's the, the funny part about it is, you could show me a bike very similar to mine, show me all the details of why it's technically a better bike, and I would enjoy the lesson and then drive down and buy my Harley. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Just the way it works. That's how, that's how a lot of people are with their brands. It's, you know? Okay, we had a good one here. I just lost it. Don't lose it. I, I lost it. But I, the I can tell you what it was, is he said, relationship of four, this relationship question oh, oh that's for you okay. i'm out of here oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. right time <laughs> relationship of four years okay yeah. but her cousin always wants to get in the middle of it thinks it's her relationship and her business and she's trying to tear the two of them apart how do you deal with that well you've got to conf you've got to make sure you talk to your partner about her cousin 
Yes. And make sure they understand how much of a problem you think the cousin is. Yeah. Right? It should be you and your partner discussing this problem cousin and making sure you're fully aware of, the other person's fully aware of how you feel about that cousin's meddling. That should be the first step. You don't just go straight to the cousin when the partner's like, what's going on? You know, yeah. The partner yeah. might not fully be, the partner might not fully see things the way you do, like your cousin's always getting in the way, right? The partner might not be on the same page. You have to make sure they know that you feel that way. Then you can go to the cousin. That's how I would do it. I would talk to my partner first. That's like very... And then I would uh, go to the cousin. I would say that's very, very well thought out. Right. I'd be very interested to know, though, how would Dusty handle it? <laughs> before I met Dusty. Before I met Dusty, I used to think things through. And I would talk to my partner rationally, and then I would approach. But after I met Dusty, just... I right. literally was, I was laughing because I'm like, that is the perfect answer and not at all what I would have done. <laughs> Listen, I drove, you know, exactly right over the table with yeah. the family and the uncle. Well, everyone's there. Yeah, just mind your own business and shut your trap. Yeah. You're an expert on our relationship because you suck at yours. Yeah. You know, just yeah, yeah, yeah. End yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Do what Ron suggests, not me. Pass the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a bodybuilding one here. Ah, uh, boy. Yep. Okay, Mike Yesertel's opinion on top set back off set is to do two to four top sets instead of one. Um, I was like, say that to Dusty, LOL. The <sighs> well, how many total sets is he doing? I mean, that's another, like, let's say your, your leg workout is leg press followed by hacks, and that's it for quads. Then maybe you do two to three top sets of leg press and one to two of hacks and you're fucking smoked. Yeah. Right? But but if you're doing, you know, four exercises and you're going to do three top sets of each one, that's like you might be just vomiting in the corner when you're done. I don't know what's, you know what I mean? Like how right. does your intensity drop off? You know, how are your sets? Yeah. So I think the 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 issue I have, like my, I'm watching the yellow. We're good. Okay. I'm okay. watching I'm just, the I'm yellow. Just thinking of you. He that's doesn't all. think I'm it's watching about the, the yellow. yellow. <laughs> I'm in I'm red now. Red. I mean, get, yeah. Let's get a bit of red. Let's get a bit um, of red. No, I mean the way I look at it is real simple though. Is I felt for myself, and this is not a one size fits all. That if I have extra sets to do, it is feasible to leave something on the table. When I have one shot at a top set. I literally think about that before I touch the bar. Oh, yeah. You have one shot. And if you have one top set for hack squats and you leave something on the table, you essentially wasted the workout. Yeah. Like, you cannot do that. I think that that fear makes sure you drive that set. You know, so that's how I approach it. I, although I smile when I read that, I don't actually think anyone is wrong in their approach to doing things. No. Um, you know, if that's something that works for you. But I feel as though if I were to do exactly that, and say three movements, I would far go beyond what the workout needs to be and screw myself on recovery. Also depends on how much, like, where are you in your training? You know, you get a guy who's squatting a plate and a half for his work sets. Maybe he needs to do two or three hard work sets of everything because mm -hmm. he's, you know, he's not generating like, like think of a guy doing an eight plate set of hacks for yeah. 12 reps to failure. And then he goes to the, the, you know, the next squat machine and it's you know, six plates aside for eight reps to failure. And, you know, he, he, you know, you can't, like, you know, the, 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 the more massive your poundages and the demand gets, the obviously the more you have to manage recovery and volume. So well, plus when you're, when you're doing up. it at that level, cause I have a guy who I've worked with for years and Diego is his name. And he, we started out with a typical three set failure kind of program. And recently on a very low volume program, I've had to lower him again. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, literally it's the point now, I mean, he got, he got rhabdo training oh god like and he's training low low volume but i've seen the sets i knew what it was as soon as he, he goes oh i'm i'm feeling this and that and i'm like oh shit yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, i knew yeah. immediately what it was and the first thing we did we we just went back to the program together i was like okay which movements are we completely dumping yeah and which ones are we backing down right and now his work like if, if, if i were to send his workout to a lot of my other clients they would immediately call me after their boring workout and say that wasn't enough yeah, because, right. you know, he is sick in the mind and I love it about him, but it, it has been a, a process to get there where he's literally his volume is as low as mine and and he's growing well, volume too, you know, um, like I've I watched a couple of clips lately that I really like Dante put a, put one out. He, he you know, 
went through the effort of putting up a post. Yes. Dante. And, Every six uh, months. And he <laughs> talked about uh, the main thing he was talking about, bang for your buck. True. Right? Yeah. And and that's a huge part of it. Like, like what are the sets? Um, you know, are you doing, say, um, uh, a machine that, you know, is hard, but it's not... You know, after your set, you're you're fine. Or are you doing you know bent barbell rows that require every muscle in your body to be tensed for stabilization mm-hmm. and sure. all that stuff? So you know, uh, what it what are the sets? You know, are you doing four working sets of like deadlifts off the floor, right. or are you doing four working sets of a plate loaded hyperextension machine? Yeah, because there's going to be like a difference of like total workload on the body. You know, like how messed up are you generally so there's a big difference there all right ron how long do you think it would take you to get back to 300 pounds and how much money would it take for you to be 300 pounds for six months (laughs) gotta carry that on you sleep so i'm just thinking 300 pounds is a lot because i was i was 243 this morning Sliced. So, like 50 you look big seven. in person. Like uh. you still look big. You look solid. Well, I mean, I still got the wide clavicles. So they you got help the out. thick neck too. Yeah, you know? the neck's not going to shrink too. This is my. This is my neck was just set size in grade twelve. So <laughs> big head. Um, <laughs> yeah, big head. Got to hold it up, right? <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, three hundred pounds. That'd be fifty-seven pounds. I'd have to gain. I could probably do that. Do you think three months, Dusty? Easily. <laughs> so yeah. I was waiting to say higher just so I could say three months. Depends if I employ. Depends if I employ the uh, the front loading sustenon method that I brought up that one time. <laughs> you know, what is it four grams on day one? <laughs> oh, and just let it float. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And just like um, you know, if you front load your sustenon right, you could. You That's could, a six months all by itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's six. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, three months. I bet I could do it. I um, could too. And uh, how long would it, how much would it cost while well, my food bill would just be like. No, he's saying, what, what would somebody have to pay you to hold it for six oh, months? To yeah. Hold it. Hold how much it. money would it take? Oh, God. He's off of his bike, people, and the spring's coming. Yeah, I'm not riding. Yeah. I'm playing a lot of guitar and I'm napping constantly. Yeah. And my food bill's higher. His business is dwindling because he's focusing on that. Yeah. Just in the gym all it's the time tough. training. I just got to dodge the heart attack from the rapid weight gain. Yeah. Isn't that what <laughs> You forgot three, about that. 300 pounds for 15 years, healthy. Goes back to 300 pounds, dead. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, the body would be like, no. It'd be like, you, you're not prepared, you know? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. It'd be 100 grand. You'd have to pay me 100 grand to do it for six months. There you go. Seems fair. So let's start the, let's start the, the bidding. fundraising. Yeah, start the fundraising. Uh this is for Ron, but Dusty, I want to know your opinion first. Overrated or underrated 90s grunge era music? Well, I'm oh. going gonna, to answer it quickly because Ron's going to destroy this. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm so excited, but it's absolutely underrated. They created a genre. It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there is that. Okay, go. <laughs> so it's underrated because when everyone thinks of grunge, unfortunately, and to his own disgust, everyone thinks of Nirvana. Of right? course, and yeah. Cobain hated that. Yeah, it was. He he's like, there's so much awesome music out there. Like he 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 loved all these other bands that he wanted to be like, and mm-hmm. they wound up, you know, stealing the thunder of the whole, you know, <laughs> that whole the, the whole Seattle movement, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, people think of grunge and they think of Nirvana and Pearl Jam, but they don't think of like Mud Honey and the Melvins and oh, the yeah. Pixies and you know Sonic Youth and all these other bands that were on the small uh, labels and playing this sort of music for a long time. They go fund me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there's there's a lot of great. Oh my, <laughs> setting up. There's a lot of great. Uh, there's a lot of great like bands that would fit under that label of grunge, which is actually terribly defined. But it's like a post kind of a post-punk post-new wave late 80s is when it started uh you know just sort of stripped down garage rock is all it is and you know without the hair you know it's like the the opposite of hair metal it's like no makeup and we're wearing jeans and t-shirts that's all it really was yeah yeah and we're gonna play cheap <laughs> guitars and we're and and stuff because we're all broke that was just it was just the most stripped down type of music that's all grunge really was yeah and but there's a lot of great stuff out there i've gone back and done all these like deep dives into bands i never paid attention to i'm like Fuck, these guys yeah. are great had you ever so, gone back and listened to the like the bands that inspired kurt yeah like yeah the vaselines yeah yeah and, and the vaselines and the pixies 
big time. Yeah. And yeah. and like I knew of the Melvins, but I didn't listen to the Melvins a lot. Yeah. But I actually went and saw the Melvins live oh, a few years really? ago when they Here? were in town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went and saw the Melvins because I was like, I gotta see the Melvins because yeah. Kurt loved the Melvins. Yeah. And they were amazing live. I was like, oh jeez. All those and bands were just like just south of here, you yeah, know, like yeah. Seattle, Sa- Portland, they're right there, just across the border. K Records, yeah, sub- and sub- I, I saw Sonic Youth live. You saw where did you I see saw Sonic, Sonic Youth? Youth in Auckland, New Zealand, in a high school gym? You're kidding me! No, and they, they were one of my favorite bands for. They were really ever. great. Yeah, were, I just listened to them the other day putting a table together. Yeah, 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 just like you know, if they, they weren't were, putting a table. together. No, no, he was. yeah, they were over at my house. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Kim Gordon. Yeah, Kim Gordon and Thurston Moore were just over my house putting a table together. You know, he let me play his Mustang. I really got you yeah <laughs> yeah yeah very misleading wrong no so yeah yeah there's a i love a lot of that music oh we have a technical uh note here from a woman named victoria felker she says hi husband tell oh. ron to stop turning his head you see i like to look mic. at you guys yeah so yeah. maybe do i do this do i maybe do i screen it. yeah i also but don't want to block you, my face exactly. i mean there's this is a money face this is a money face if you brought it in this group in front of your face yeah you know? <laughs> in this group is definitely money you're good i'm if just like thinking face, that might ruin. there we go that maybe that's hopefully that's good thank you this picky chick He's yes. telling me how to talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're talking wrong. You're talking wrong. <laughs> yeah, for me. Yeah. Right. Let's okay. see what else we've got here. Um, well, i got to thanks for setting this up. But really, I mean, gosh, you could, guys, like we said at the beginning, you could thank Mutant for setting this up. Because really, yeah. That's, yeah. that's the truth of the matter. I would have done it anyway. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're like, hey, come You were going to fly up on your own diamond, yeah. and they went and paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> I prefer their diamond. I like to fly on theirs. All right. Yeah. Ooh, this is just a real general question. I don't know. I, I, oh, boy. Chris, over and under, bodybuilding. <laughs> I'm, I've, this is dangerous for me to touch right now. <laughs> bodybuilding like the activity or bodybuilding the sport? Oh, I man. I don't know. How do you define it? You know? what do you, how yeah. do you interpret that? Yeah, that's, that's a great one. Huh. He, he that's like a great one. He gets like a little asterisk on that question yeah. or something like that. <laughs> we're just because this we're is like the most. You, this Chris. is the most like existential question we've ever had. We've got to reflect on our own, our our own like yeah uh, place in the world. If we answer that it's worthless, then our lives are worthless. Yeah, you we lose, that. and then like you know, you know, mutant pulls a plug on this and it immediately shuts down. Yeah, yeah. and everything we're sort of. <laughs> Boom. Sort of got is that, a, you guys are contracted. Can just you, say three that bodybuilding years. is yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. So bodybuilding is underrated. It is an awesome activity. Everyone should do more bodybuilding. It is the root of all health and wellness. We're going and health. These Lovely. foundational <laughs> principles will stay with you for the rest of your life. That's true. Oh, there man. You That's you my did. answer, Scott. That's good. Scott, okay. I, I want is that your, good? I want, I want Scott's answer. Is that good? Answer. Is that a good answer? Scott's been dodging answering recently. Okay. Oh, we're good. We Mutant said nod. it's all right. Mutant said it's okay, all right. Good, good, good. All right. I, w- I was clear anyway. I mean, they might, <laughs> you can say whatever I might you want. not be able to stay in the mansion tonight. Yeah, you're out. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, you get back to bed <laughs> on the lawn. Thanks on the lawn. Nice knowing you. Guys, There's a hammock in the, the back. Code. There's a hammock. The code, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm definitely, I'm going to say, it, you know, it depends on where you're at. But when you, when you start bodybuilding and you see, even though we've all been in it for a long time, you meet somebody every year that's brand new, right? Yep. And that they absolutely love it, right? Unbelievable. That's what bodybuilding is. Yeah. Along the way, you have your own journey. There's good things. There's bad things. And how do you process it? That's on you. That's not on bodybuilding. So if you have a bad experience, <sighs> if you fail at a show, and then you get butt hurt, that's not bodybuilding that did that to you. You know what I'm saying? It's you. Bodybuilding is always what it was to begin with. It's how you how you chose to look at it, your perspective. So, like, if there was a an abyss, have you seen the movie The Abyss? Yes, great movie, Long by the way. Ago, a little right? throwback. The Abyss was amazing. Yeah. If there was an abyss to the deepest point the show has ever gone, just went there. And yeah. I don't mean abyss like pit of hell i mean deep like yeah. deep to the soul to the core of the earth scott yeah that was the answer wow it's you it's not bodybuilding yeah. all your problems are from you that was that right literally that was dusty so, loved that i could uh, see as soon as you I started like, dusty was back. like oh, <laughs> oh, oh. 
I changed my answer. Why yeah, you answer Dusty's that? actually got upset because he's like, oh, I have nothing. I was he's wrong. Saying, how, about end, how about if I ended that and I was like, and with that said, accurately rated. <laughs> and I would have to agree. <laughs> I was going to say that Scott answering is underrated. <laughs> and we need more of it. Scott answers. Scott's answers. Underrated. Yeah, yeah that's the next one. Okay. Oh, oh, that geez. was great. That was. was great. You are totally right. You are totally right. You know what my mom was the happiest about? She said, bodybuilding got me to eat my vegetables. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah she yeah. said that. That was like a quote. She's like, well, I tried for 18 years. Couldn't get you to eat your vegetables. Yeah. All of a sudden, Flex Magazine. <laughs> Flex you Magazine. Eat your vegetables. Thank you. <laughs> you Start eating vegetables all on your own. Unbelievable. Oh. She just threw her hands up. Uh. Wow, there's a lot of music stuff in here. Oh, uh, that's a great question. I want the answer. Okay, okay. Sorry, Overrated, I need that. Underrated, the band Tool. Mm. I think I know the answer. We'll see. Uh, those are hard. Well, I've met... Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's crazy people that... that there's, there's crazy people for everything, but I, I would say Tool's underrated. Um... They 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 just don't care. They don't care. I I love that about them. And bodybuilding fixes ninety percent of my shit. You see that one? Yeah, that was good. That was awesome. That was good. The th- thing I like about Tool is they are true artists and they don't care what you think. And quite often you see bands. I sort of respect this about Tool. As their albums go, their albums get more commercially viable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Tool yeah. started out as a like a met- progressive metal band. Is that what they were called? Or the, yeah, they kind they of be? prog metal, LA metal. Like you know, they were they were like a metal, hard rock metal band at the beginning. Yeah. You know, they had four minute songs. You know, and the the albums got more complex and more you know sort of same with Metallica. You know, by the time yes. they got to Justice, the songs were eight minutes long and they were fucking massive and there was all this stuff going on. And that's what Tool did. And then they just went like avant-garde for the last two albums. They're like, we're going to do an album, and then we're not going to do another album for 13 years. And we're going to do that album, and it's going to be almost like, it'll be completely unradio playable. Each song is like 11 minutes long, and we're just going to do this thing. And I get it because I'm a, a Tool fan. They're, they're, you know, like I love that when an artist is like, oh, yeah, we don't care if anyone ever buys an album. Right. We're yeah, making yeah. this music. It's our thing, like the art, the album cover. Mm-hmm. They're also one of the only bands that is making a product like the vinyl. It, it's all part of the album, the art, the way it's presented. That's their product. It's not just the songs that that's what everyone else does now. They just make us they make an album and it goes on Spotify. Right, right. Tool, yeah. tools like if you really want our album, you have to buy the album because oh. that's the complete project with everything. That's cool. It's not just what you download. You can download <clears throat> that because we live in 2023 and that's how we have to do it. Yeah, but make money. If you really want what we made, you have to buy the vinyl record and look at everything. <clears throat> and I think that's super cool. Yeah, nice. yeah. yeah. There's a Canadian area, <clears throat> Canadian area group called Constellation, no Constellation Records. And they make they're like super underground. They still press vinyl. They still yeah. they never stop. They're out of Quebec. Yeah. And they're like really like they put it this way, they're they're when they when some of the bands tried to come to the US for a tour after nine eleven, they actually stopped them because they thought they were terrorists based off of some of their material. Uh-huh. But they were just like questioning the government. Right, they, right. They're like <laughs> a kind of punk label a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Some of those punk have that some of those punk of, bands yeah, no get in trouble yeah. at the border. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Canadians come to the U.S. and we're worried. Jeez. Yeah, they, there's. It's funny. I I have a, a bunch of friends that are big vinyl listeners. Right. You yeah. know, even Dino. Like Dino puts vinyl on all the time. Oh, that'd he'll, be so cool. He'll yeah. pull up one of his old '70s punk records out and he'll drop the needle on Instagram. You know. Yeah. And yeah, crank it up. Does he like, do that in the gym? Yeah. Well, no, he does it at home. Oh, okay. But, okay. but yeah, you know. But he'll crank some vinyl and listen to the Sex Pistols, and it's like an actual record from the '70s spinning, and it's <laughs> cool. And I, I I get that my vinyl friends say the reason it sounds different is the compression is different. Yeah. The, you the the quieter sounds are quieter and the louder sounds are louder. Like there's a bigger distance between the quiet and the loud on mm-hmm. vinyl, so it's more dynamic. And they hear that, and and I get it. I've listened to vinyl records that I really really I, I listen to albums that I know back to front. I've listened to them on vinyl for the first time, and been like, oh, it does sound a little different. Like I get it. I get that there's an audiophile thing that people love, but I have one friend who goes one step further. Yeah. He goes, oh, vinyl's not the best. 
What comes before vinyl? I don't know. Reel to reel tape. Oh, really? And that's what he listens to when he wants to get his like real audio file. How on. do you find reel to reel tape? He's seven hundred years old. You got to be. <laughs> yeah. So the actual reel to reel tape that they use in the studio. When they record oh. on the tape, the old school, when they'd cut and yeah. take all the editing they would do to actual tape, and then they would make a master tape, and then that would get sent off for the album. And he said, if Good you ever God. get... He sat in archival studios with producers and listened to the tape of famous albums before. Yeah. And he's like, that's really an experience, because you know you're listening to the really root... That is the first recording of that song ready to go before any record was made was that tape real real tape and he's heard some of the classic albums on tape because he's been all around the states and been to all the studios yeah and he's listened wow. to some albums on real to real tape and that'd be so hard to get you oh know? you'd have to know the person who has the yeah how would copy? you know that yeah, yeah. or yeah. you'd have to know the studio that has the copy or whoever has <clears throat> it you know all right a little more bodybuilding here hey guys opinions on training three days a week but those three days are a.m. and p.m. sessions mm. like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So does he mean yeah. twice Monday, so twice, yeah. 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 twice okay. Monday, twice Six Wednesday, workouts. twice Friday? Yeah, it's an interesting split. I huh. don't see why it wouldn't work if that's what you. Maybe you have to do that. Like, let's say you had a crazy job that was like Tuesdays and Thursdays are hell. Yeah, yeah. and weekends you got to spend with your kids. Maybe that's your life. That would maybe work. Like, who's to say it can't? You could. Jamie you know, does that on five days a week. Yeah, Jamie Does trains he? twice a day, five <clears throat> days a week, you yeah. know? Monday to Friday. Really? Yeah. Five I didn't days know straight, that. two days, two times a day. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'd say it, it maybe, you know, <clears throat> maybe you can handle more. But, yeah, I mean, it, it, sp how you split up your training, I don't think is, is one of the, like, huge things. It's about frequency, total volume, all that sort of stuff. I mean, this, this stuff matters. Yeah. You know what I mean? But. You can make any of this stuff work. Like, I've seen all sorts of messed up splits work because there are nurses working, like, crazy shifts or they're in and out of the bush two weeks on, two weeks off, and yeah. they're trying to hit things multiple times when they're home because they can only hit them once when they're away. Like, so I've, I've seen all sorts of crazy splits work. Yeah. I've seen people... I've seen a lot of people find a way to win. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've seen more people find a way to lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Hey. Didn't hey. you do a, 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 a Ronnie split at one time that required twice a day training? Oh, yeah. I've, I played with every option to see. And I'll be honest. It was, it was after, like, bodybuilding at some point in my life became a pain in the ass to do. It was just difficult to get back into. And I realized the best way to immerse myself was to train twice a day. So I literally just like threw myself into bodybuilding for like six weeks. I've done that where it before. was all I was doing. Yeah. And then everything clicked back in. It was back to flowing. Yeah. And I went back to normal training again. I did yeah. that after a breakup one time. Oh yeah. I had a, like a big breakup that I went through. Yeah. So I was like, I'm just gonna double split for like a while. Yeah. So I go in the morning, train chest, go back at night, train tries, chat with people, kind of be social. Yeah. And it just like kept me like really structured and you know i wasn't laying around all morning and like uh, like you yeah. know do my emails later like it just kind of just kept me like and you probably knew it wasn't going to necessarily be the best thing for you like you weren't going into that like hey i'm going to grow the most i ever have with this you're like no I need this. no but it definitely made me feel positive and like ah, fr yeah fresh you yeah, know like yeah. really fresh you know we got a little morning new morning routine you know you know I trained, that sort of thing i trained for about i'd say three or four months straight without a day off Oh, for, oh, man. for the same reason. Really? I went through a breakup. Just and yourself, I was just like, yeah. you know, I'm just going to stay busy. Yeah. And I knew it was like, after a while, it was kind of like, I'm just punching a clock. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I yeah. know that it wasn't necessarily the best thing for my training. Yeah. I did end up making really good progress that year, but I think it was like in spite of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I am going to do the first bathroom break of the live show. Oh, we've okay. ever had a live bathroom break. Yeah, yes. we've official. Well, I pounded the energy drink. I told you the caffeine. You did, yeah. Direct <laughs> result is more urine, <laughs> urine. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can I say urine? Urine is a weird word to say on the air. I, I don't know. It's Just one of those words. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> we got some slide now. Oh, oh that's up the flag. Oh, that's up the flag. Look at that. We're still live. We're still alive. Come back. Yourselves. You'll get to see how big Dusty really is now. If uh, see, because people, 
You're, like, you're so you're so concerned of this. Yeah, I, I am. I, Earlier I, in my career, I would care. Now yeah. it's uh, <laughs> it's all past that. See, I had somebody actually. It was funny. I had a guy comment uh, at the one of the shows. He's like, I can't believe that Ron is still your size. Yeah. And I was like, He's not. I don't I don't know why that would even enter your brain. Yeah. Um, because when Ron was his biggest, he was three thirty. Good. God. I don't think that they really like. You can't, when you hear a number, you can't put that into play. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, I've even done that with myself. I look, I've seen some pictures from Mutant that I'm like, I don't remember being that big. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm drastically smaller than I was then. And it's like, I, I don't think people realize, like, and Ron's, what, three, almost four inches taller than me? Yeah. At least three. Yeah. So imagine that plus 80 pounds more than he is now, almost 90. Yeah. That's a Backstreet Boy. That's a <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot. We got one for we got one for you and me here. Oh, perfect. Uh, let's see. Jerry says, "Okay, overrated, underrated BPC." Uh, now that I think both Scott and Dusty have used it, um, afterthought, Scott. I know you have gone through thoughts on muscle minds. Um, not sure if Ron has used it or not. I don't know if he has either. <clears throat> um, well, what was your experience? And what we're using it for? Uh, I've used it a bunch, and most recently, so I, I and this is this is like a now situation. So I I started getting tennis elbow. I started getting consistent with my training again. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, like tennis elbow comes out of nowhere, and I'm like, what the hell? You know, right. I haven't had tennis elbow in forever. And then I went to this uh, uh, shooting. Uh, it was like a, a shooting class. Right. And we're keep doing talking. this. Keep talking. Yeah, we're doing this really cool thing, where you. Uh, I was telling Ron about this earlier, I think, where you transition from the rifle to the pistol. So you got your pistol on your side. Uh, you got I your leave rifle. the room for t two minutes. It all goes to guns. It all goes to guns. You got the so so you're you're hiding behind a barricade. You pop out, bam bam bam, then move to the next barricade, bam bam bam, and then you got to reload your magazine. And so I'm holding a rifle out with one arm like this. Drop right. the mag. Throw the other one in. And oh, that pressure, yeah. like after that class, man, my elbow was screaming. Right. This was on Tuesday of last week. The day after I talked to George and we like solidified that I'm coming out here. And I'm thinking to myself, I can hurt. Like I couldn't even pick up a coffee cup. It was like that bad. It went to like just hell. Right? <laughs> just from nothing. So I got online, went to AminoAsylum.com. I don't know, dot shop, I think. And uh, no. use code THINK. And uh I ordered up some BBC and TD right. 500. So this is my we're we're sharing our latest experience, and uh, it didn't show up until Friday. Oh, so God. I took two and a half milligrams. So you front loaded on Friday, <laughs> four grams, four grams all at once, front directly in the elbow, the bone of each um. TD and BPC, and then two and a half milligrams on on set, no, Saturday. No, excuse me, Saturday and then Sunday. Right. And it, it did help, but I normally wouldn't suggest taking five milligrams of BBC right. in two right. days. That's a lot. I would say, though, that... What's uh, your, your normal dose? Normal dose would probably be... I'd go up to a milligram high okay. end. Yeah, right. how about you? Uh, I was doing half uh, every single day. and still That's am. good. Still am. Yeah. Um, and it's been... It was one of those things, so when I first started doing it, it was... You know, like, I'm doing it. I don't know if it's helping or not helping. And then... It, Suddenly, when I, I guess once I really got back into pushing weight again, I realized like, oh, it's working. Because this, having this labrum torn, my shoulder literally cracks and moves mm. around. Yeah. Um, and I went and started pushing heavy, and I'm like, oh, it's not doing that. Right. And then the big thing too was like uh, heavy weight just pulling on my arm. So like <clears throat> doing a RDL heavy, I would feel it almost. Yeah. Pulling down, you know. Yeah. And the other day, I mean, I only went up to like five plates, but it never yeah. even like shifted. No, no kidding. Five yeah, plates. just five plates. <laughs> do you do you put it direct in the area? Direct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All of them every single day, and it's drastic how much it's helped. So now it's. I went from kind of like, oh, you should maybe try this, to like, anytime somebody has something that appears that it can become a problem, yeah, I just tell them to dive in. Like I keep it. I would keep it on hand if you train hard, because you're gonna have something. Have you ever used it? BPC and TB500 together. Yeah. That's usually, the only way. Yeah. yeah. They had just kind of like everyone was talking about them uh, around like 2014, 15 was kind of getting buzz. And then I tore my quad in 2016. So I yeah. used a bunch at that time. 
Um, and then I had like a bunch of shoulder issues like last year, and I ordered some BPC and TB500. Okay. But I've also read a lot about BPC being pretty sy- sy- systemic. Like, yeah. Yes. You know, some guys say you can, you're supposed to put it local, but then there's also been some people drinking it orally, and it helps with their inflammation so in their digestive you system. you have to use a higher dose. Yeah, orally, yeah, 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 thing. definitely. Yeah. And then um, there's been lots of guys say that even just using it sub-Q, they felt that it helped a lot because as long as it's in the system, like, it didn't yep. have to go into local. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people think that works better. It gets it right in there. But I, I wasn't worried about that. I was just doing sub-Q with all my TB and BPC. Yeah. And I definitely, my shoulders are way better than they were before. Yeah. Because I was having some problems. It was when I first started riding, my shoulders oh. were just like, fuck. It was I think, hard. I think the important thing, too, is is to figure out what the issue is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can't like, just keep what, pounding it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be it. So but, you're not going back to that class, then? Uh, <laughs> of course I'm going back. <laughs> See of what he just said? He said, just think, figure out the yeah, problem. He knows the problem. He's still going to do it. What though. if you need to reload your machine gun with one hand while you're running? Yeah, I mean, what if you, you get hit in the left arm? Yeah. You know, Zombie apocalypse. You have to plan. For yeah, this you got to be able to shoot one-handed. There's no, yeah, yeah. there's no question about it. Uh, we ha- looks like maybe... Uh, how, uh, I'm just going to pull this oh, one so up. Someone's, I see someone's mic turned off? No, nope. we we're good. We're good. You fixed it. We're good. There was, was no hurt. there was no issue. I think it was on, on her end. Oh, she's lying to us now. Yes. How much okay. testosterone with 250 milligrams of HCG? Thrice. Thrice. Wow. Thrice. Thrice. Oh, we Very impressed with replace, the use of that word. Yeah, replace on a cruise. Um, say you normally cruise on 280 milligrams of test. That's not a cruise. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, more, that's more than me. If you add this amount of HCG... How much I, less I get the question. Yeah. I understand the question. Well, can't t- 250 milligrams isn't a lot of HCG, like three times a week. It w- would be enough to cause an increase in your testosterone production. Yeah. I mean, obviously, each one of those is going to do something. But I don't know how many milligrams it would equal. Two, 280 is a – that's that's HRT+. plus. <laughs> That's I love that slightly term. plus. I love that term. That's slightly <laughs> HRT plus. Yeah. You know, I'm on. I, I do 200 to 250, depending on if I'm using the, my pharmacy script one. I do that every. I say seven days, but I always forget, and it's <laughs> always like eight, nine, ten days. That's yeah. the problem. That's a problem with doing. True TRT is you literally yeah, forget all you the forget. time. Yeah, I forget yep. all the time. I'm like, like that's oh, not just me. <laughs> Mute, Mute, everyone here. Mutant wants to film me. I guess I have to look like a bodybuilder. When's the last time I? <laughs> <laughs> I might need to. Uh, yeah, need to take we my should shot. front load this one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And here we're back to the four grams of cestinon. Yes. Okay. All right. How about this one? Um, question for Dusty. Uh, how far can someone go on a DC AB routine? before they have to change to a different split uh, if DC training. AB is just a two-day split? Yeah. It, it, there's not like a there's not a timeline on that. I still, and this is a combination, obviously, I still think that some of the best gains in my entire career were during that time. Now, of course, it's also the freshest time of, of me learning that yeah. kind of program. But I, I want to say I ran it for a year. Yeah? Yeah, and, and loved it. And then we, we started to switch the moment that – it was very obvious that my back was growing completely out of control compared to other muscles. Oh. And so we had to kind of like figure out. It's such well, a the, problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the problem was the other one sucked. But oh. anyways, <laughs> you, you, you worded that in a very polite way. I like that. <laughs> it was, uh, but no. So, I mean, realistically, if you're getting change with it, I wouldn't change at all. I mean, if you're seeing progress, that's the craziest thing about bodybuilding to me is people will literally be seeing results doing whatever it is they're doing and then just decide to change. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, yeah. why? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> So the fad comes in or something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I read an interesting post about this the other day and it was, I, I can't remember who it was, so I can't give them any credit, but it was, um, like, a uh, it was a woman and she was like an academic, like it was one of those PhD posts. I can't remember who it was. It was one of like that kind of, you know, Victoria fitness. Yeah. It wasn't Victoria, <laughs> but I'm not pointing at her. No, it was someone else, but she was saying, one of the main hurdles with women in the gym is, um, and she talked about it from a couple of different angles. I don't, I'm not going to want to bastardize what she said, but she said that they have so much demand for novelty uh, and fun. 
and yeah, yeah. change. Yeah. That they miss a lot of the the gains that are found in the repetitive pr- progression of one program. Yeah. And she's like, "Why is it I have male athletes come to me and I'm like, here's your program, come back to me in 8 weeks." Yep. And they come back 8 weeks later and they're like, "Okay, my bench is up 30 pounds and I'm up 3 pounds on the scale." Yeah. She's like, "Okay, and then she said the women athletes come to her and like they'll come back two weeks later and they're like, do you have a new like leg workout for me? Like yeah. this one's, and she said that's just an interesting thing that she's noticed. Huh. It's more it's more prevalent. Obviously, you know, yeah, both. a lot of the numbers are a lot. It goes back and forth. But yeah. she just said that in her experience, she sees a lot more of that with the women than with the men. And she thinks it's an obstacle for them. And she wishes more of them understood that no 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 just stay on this program like progress on this yeah and dc is one of the ultimate examples of that because you're there's very few exercises in that a b how many total exercises do you yeah. do Ev- like, everything gets one yeah but it's like eight total exercises for the whole body like how many is ten yeah. maybe ten yeah i have to look right yeah. and that's yeah. it and you just yeah. do it for a year so yeah. uh, matt so that's one of the reasons why it's so challenging for people is, yeah. is they just they just feel like they should be doing all this other stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, I see her doing that, and I see him doing that. And I see Why him not doing get that. really, really good yeah. at a few things? You know what's yeah. crazy is the other day um, when I started just getting basic again, I did just heavy dead stop rows. Yeah. And I, and I laughed because I was sore for three days, and I was like, why do I ever use a hammer row? Huh. I mean, obviously yeah. there's a reason, but it's just one of those situations where you realize that – I feel like the further you make things basic, the more you get like surprised on why you do so much extra shit. Right. Yeah. And another thing, I, I want to tell this story because I just want to paint the importance of tiny little changes. Tiny little changes can be impactful. So I don't deadlift anymore off the floor. Right. And, and I don't do bent over rows anymore either. Like there's a bunch of stuff I don't do anymore. But I still want to load my lower back some way Mm -hmm. because like i want to be strong and you know i want to be able to pick something up off the ground and i want to be able to move weights around and i don't want to be like just crazy weak in that position right right yeah so even though i don't deadlift anymore and i don't do bent over rows anymore i still want to you know i still do t-bars and i still do stiff leg deadlifts which are very important i think that's like one of the key exercises so my lower back still gets loaded Mm -hmm. but the other day we were doing machine deads and I was warming up on it. We have an Atlantis machine down there, and we were standing on a box. We were getting like it was like a stiff leg deadlift, but nice deep on a, on a machine. Yeah. And I and I just felt like I was I was like you know I, I want to hit my lower back a little more. I actually want to include a little more lower back. Mm, yeah. Like I want it to be full posterior chain. You know, I want to yeah. hit everything. So I just started bending my knees like an inch more at the bottom of the rep. I would go down on my hams, and yeah. then I would just sink Let like bend, one yeah. inch. Like it was barely a change. The next day, glutes, hams, and my erectors were completely sore. No kidding. And I was like, wow, just that one little tweak, and I, and I, I added the erectors in the chain a lot more than normal. Yep. So it just, it just was interesting to me. And after all these years of training, there was just this little thing I'd never done before that changed the movement. Like instead of my glutes and hams being pumped, my glutes, hams, and lower back were pumped. Yeah. Right. And I was like, wow, just by that little, little mechanical change, I was able to you know, add the erectors completely and obviously remove them completely if you wanted to, right? So it's just, you know, you can do a lot with tiny little changes in the gym. You don't have to completely swap the exercises out. Yeah. Hey, we got a long time uh, follower of you, Ron. It says, uh, hey, Ron, been a fan for uh, a while. Used to watch you and Gabe back in 2013. Oh. Always found you guys inspirational for taller yeah, guys. Yeah, shit. Yeah, glad to see that you're doing well and looking healthy. Yeah, those were good times, man. Remember, remember Gabe at the booth? He I was do. huge. Once you would get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once he got him there. <laughs> once he got dressed. Yeah, he looked great at the booth. He was he was good at the booth. <laughs> Big dude. You know, we uh, we asked you on the last episode. We were talking about like the all the meetups and stuff like that because you've been doing this a long time. But I didn't ask you, Dusty. Mm-hmm. What, what what? No, you said you had been doing like you've been traveling around doing stuff. Like with com- like you did this with hockey mm-hmm. before bodybuilding. How how old were you the first time that like you were part of a a team where you were like flowing places and stuff like that? Fourteen. Yeah. Fourteen yeah. years old. Yep. I was regular, very regular. 
14 and then never stopped. So that was year round summers, you know, I mean, going just to take camps, off. Going to, yeah, you'd yeah. fly to, you'd go to from Michigan, then you get done there, and then you'd fly somewhere else, and and you know, I mean, just constantly going somewhere was normal. Yeah, you just no kidding. And when you're that age, obviously there's there's just a couple like coaches and then a couple parents that just kind of run the whole thing. You just find out where you're supposed to go. They put you in a hotel, and yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's basic. That's you got wild. The, you got the chaperone. Yeah. That's poor, wild. Poor people. That <laughs> rough. I would not sign up for that, for the record. Hockey boys. Mm. Yeah. I'm learning more and more about that as I watch Letter Kenny. So I, oh, I, yeah, I yeah. Have a great, yeah, yeah. Great option for you. I have, I have a question for you, Scott, because yes. you're not answering questions. Who is the most surprising interview that you've done in all these years? Somebody who you didn't, were not prepared for how good it went and what, what made it different? Man, that's a, that's a tough one. And part and of don't it say is us because like, we know, um, but other than us, you know, I I was really happy with both I, two interviews I did do with you guys, and and they were a couple of my favorites. Um, I, can I can I tell you a story instead? Yes, I, I wanted to tell I just you. Want I, Scott to talk. I uh, I hadn't told you guys this before, so I met Dusty. I can't remember who I met you through, mm-hmm. but we recorded a podcast, and it was really good, and like the audience really connected to it. And we talked just all, it was my first installment of uh, Advices Radio, Huge as Fuck. That's what it was called. Right. So was he on Mutant at the time, or was he still iForce back in the day? That was before Mutant. Was it before Mutant? Yep. Okay. Might have been, yeah. So, it, and, and, you know, we talked about peak-to-peak thinking, and, mm-hmm. and it, it really connected to a lot of people. And anyway, so, like, four few months later, no, you were with Mutant. Oh, was I? Yeah, yeah, yeah you were with Mutant. Because a few months later was the Arnold. And... It was like 5 a.m., and I had never met Dusty before. And I, I had gone to Powerhouse to get a workout in before everything went on. And then who comes walking in the door is Dusty. And I had never met him before, you know? So I was kind of like, oh, shit, there's, there's Dusty Hanshaw over there. And I was like, oh, hey, man, Scott McNally, you know, we did the podcast. He was like, oh, yeah, yeah, good to see you. And so I sit down on a pec deck, and I'm doing my thing. And then Dusty sits down on the pec deck next to me. And he's doing his thing. It's like, I'm not going to bother the guy, you know? And then we, he goes over to the dumbbells, and I was heading over the dumbbells. So we're over at the dumbbells, and I think I was doing something at this point with shoulders. I don't remember what you were doing. But those dumbbells in there, they're the worst. <laughs> they are the worst. Dude, why, they are why, the worst. Why are they the worst? <laughs> those are the most dangerous dumbbells you've ever seen in your life, but go ahead. <laughs> yes. So Dusty's here. I can give you guys the visual. I'm over here, you know? And uh, I do my overhead press, and I go to bring him down, and I came right down. There's a there's a <laughs> fucking bolt on the end of yeah. each one. There's a bolt on the end of each one, <laughs> and I went right into my thigh. Oh yeah, and it hurt, like it really the hurt. Charlie horse the shit out. Yeah. Of <laughs> And Dusty's sitting right there, and I don't know him, so I didn't want to like be like a big baby and be like, "Oh my leg!" <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, "Oh." Uh, yeah. What's up, bro? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got, the contain. Classic. The containment is very important. Yeah. It was like one of those pains oh, where like yeah. just the sweat almost starts coming off your face. You I, know what I mean? I remember I remember one of those. I was at Gold's gym and I had just trained legs in the back room and I was soaking wet. Yes. And it was LA Fit. And I came out of the back room, and of course it was Gold's Venice, LA Fit, so there's everyone's there, yeah. right? And I come out of the back room to the front room, and there's Rob Bailey, and uh, everyone's standing around kind of having a talk in the middle of the gym, right? And I see them, I see, and I, I lock eyes with Rob, like, hey, like, you know that look? And it was so busy, I kind of stepped around some people into the dumbbell area. And I took a step, and in one of those... One of those seat, you know, the chair benches with the foot platform? Yeah. I didn't oh. see it, and I raked my shin. shin. Oh, <laughs> I smashed yeah, it. yeah. I I've s- done that before. S- I did the smash and yep. the drag. Yeah. Oh. It was the smash and drag across that foot plate as I walked. Yeah. And I just thought, don't let him see it. Yeah. <laughs> So I just was like, hey, Rob, smash and drag. What's up? Step right in, shake his hand. And I, as I'm shaking his hand, I'm like, 
I'm testing myself to see if he can tell how much like, pain I'm one, in right now. One tear. One tear. Just, <laughs> just. That's I remember I had that moment where I was shaking his hand and shake. I think it was Frank McGrath who's standing next to him. I like shake his hand. I'm like, <laughs> deep breath. <laughs> bleed. I'm like, I know I'm bleeding. I know I'm bleeding. <laughs> There's blood coming down my shin right now. I know I'm bleeding. I'm just gonna talk to were these wearing, guys. Were you wearing pants though? Oh yeah. So, so they, they didn't. No, know. they didn't know. They didn't, they didn't know. know. Didn't need to know a thing. No yeah. one needs to know my pain. Yeah. Just kept it in. And it was like it's great for it counseling. Was like, no one needs to know my pain. Yeah, it was like like the chair moved and made a sound. Ding. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I can almost feel that. Oh now. yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It was a good one. Yeah. But he never knew. Yeah. Dusty didn't until know this he moment. Knows, yeah. He knows yeah. now. He didn't know. Yeah, Someone just said this. Know. Until now, I yeah. didn't either. Yeah. I, did, I had no idea he did yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And then we shot a little video. And we it was did. I remember like, that. Yeah, because like, hey, I'm running like, down here. Blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah exactly. We're like, fine. come see Dusty at the booth. You know. Get back fine. to my room. Just like, oh, pull the leg, pat leg up. Oh, Jesus. That's actually the, the leg that he eventually tore his quad on. So that's yeah. why. <laughs> it was a pre started there. Yes. Yes. People are saying we should put Victorians. There. I've been saying that forever. I know. I forever. Know. Oh, enough of the Victoria. I know <laughs> she's, so, she's going to correct Ron on his microphone. You guys in need person. your average IQ brought up. Please add Victoria. <laughs> oh, we got well, the, uh, yeah, we got a super chat, too. Oh, no. Yeah. Goodness. Thank oh. you very much, Brody. Brody. Oh, that's awesome. Damn. Yeah. He says, uh, hi, guys. Thank you for Think Big. Uh, it's just bodybuilding and broadcasting at West Coast. Thank you. I love the maple leaf in your avatar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a maple leaf, is it? Interesting. Is, isn't it a Canadian maple leaf? Isn't that what I mean? It's got to be. It's an herbal one. They've changed it's herbal. it. They changed it a little. It's a new one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Uh, this We are literally, like you guys don't see this, but I'm literally looking at one of the best gyms, if not the best gym in Canada right here. The yeah. best. There's a lot of good gyms. There's a lot of good gyms. This is, yeah, well, I was trying to be, keep it humble for thing. you. We do our thing. You know, yeah, I, I know. I keep it humble for you. We do, we do our thing. I felt like it you might know? be bragging if I was like, the best gym in the world, right. you know? It's like the Olympia competitor lane. They're stretching, but no big deal. beside the point. No big deal. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. Just top five in the world. Anyways. I can't find where it's at on here, but we had another underrated, overrated, or uh, which was, no, not underrated, overrated, but it was what was, what's the, the most overrated uh, diet food or clean food? Tilapia. And what's the, the most underrated clean food? So it was uh, both ways. Tilapia is the most overrated food to ever enter the bodybuilding realm. Flank steak is underrated. Flank steak flank is underrated. Steak. I love flank steak. I don't think I've done a lot of flank steak. I don't think there's much more that needs to be said. I don't have anything else to add that's better than flank steak, and I know that nobody else has anything <laughs> better than my tilapia, tilapia <laughs> answer. But, yeah. Shitfish cannot be topped. No. Like, don't eat, don't eat food you hate to prep for a show. Yes. You don't have to. I got ready for so many shows on chicken and steak and egg whites that I loved and oatmeal and rice. And I loved all my food. I never had a miserable, like, oh, I'm going to eat tilapia and asparagus. No, you yeah. don't. Yeah. Find yeah. something better than that. There's something I don't better. mind tilapia, though. Yeah, like, some people don't mind it, but I yeah. can't imagine living my life on tilapia. I just can't imagine. Like I did the Jay Cutler thing where I got the George Foreman grill. Oh, I did, too. Outside. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it only takes, like, six minutes to yeah. cook up a Put bunch of... Put it outside. Of, Keep that shit out of your house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That works. <laughs> that works. <laughs> um, oh, we got another super chat, too, from Jesse. Thank you very much. Whoa. Yeah, look at that. That's, a, that's heavy. Thank you. Yeah. Damn. That's, Jesse a, that's says, a great client of mine, you, by Coach the way. Ron and Scott. Yeah, so he's your client. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The kid's a beast. No kidding. Literally a machine. I had to, I had to like force him on a vacation to like not find a way to go to the gym. It's like a family. I'm like, right. you can take a week off. Here I am in Mexico squatting five <laughs> plates. Yeah. yeah. Literally. Right. My entire like, family and girlfriend are pissed at me, but this but is us top set right get here. Get my five he plates would, in. Without question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love right. that. Well, thank you very much. He said, okay, we have another one here. What's your opinions on SARMs for a lifestyle bodybuilder? I w wouldn't bother with them um, at all. I would, I would use testosterone, and m you could experiment with very simple compounds like Anavar and you know stuff that's been thoroughly researched for human consumption. There's a bunch of that. I think the the the, the problem was. The differentiation between a competitive bodybuilder and a bodybuilder, I do not. There's, they're not different to me. Right, you're trying to make gains. Like, it's yeah, it's not like you want you less are, gains. It's funny. I had somebody ask me like, "What are you going to do now that you've?" Uh, actually, it was my friend Daniel. He's he stopped competitive bodybuilding. 
And uh, the guy at our cigar shop's like, what are you going to do now that you're done bodybuilding? And he's like, I'm not done bodybuilding. I'm done competing. Yeah. yeah. It's like different. It never ends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I still want to train. So the same thing if you're never, if you, I've always, I've always hated that question. If you're never going to compete, but you like training and putting on muscle mass, you are a bodybuilder. Yeah. yeah. The end. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. All right. Overrated, underrated, chasing the pump. Ooh, that's a great one. That is a good question. You know, there's like, there is very little that feels better than like a full nuclear back pump. <laughs> hey, where yeah. like your lats are so full, you're like, oh my God, how am I even going to move? Or your <laughs> quads are so blown out, you can't bend your knee 90 degrees or like that. That's, that's pretty awesome. But I'm not convinced that the pump is the priority. You but know what I mean? Cure? Yeah, it's secure. <laughs> As Antoine would say, the pump is secure. But it, it's not the priority. You know what I mean? The the load on the muscle, the performance in the set, all that stuff is the priority. So I think some people think the pump is like what they need. Yeah. yeah. But it's not. I mean, we don't have any evidence that it's the trigger yet, do we? We don't have that. The proof hasn't been. It's. I mean, there's some a bunch of positive stuff about what uh, the, the cellular pump does for growth factors and all this stuff they talk about metabolic things that can happen yeah but yeah i don't think it's the root of muscle growth yeah there's what, the uh, scott stevenson on the podcast has yeah, talked what does about he say? the sarcoplasmic hypertrophy yeah 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 so okay. there's there's that yeah and that's going to be a very small percentage yeah. of the muscle so it's not the structural protein changes I, I think yeah i think that if you were to train like dusty talked about with dc pick a few good exercises and get really big and not worry about the pump at all, you could probably worry about the pump later. Right. After you're already big. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Then I yeah. think it'd make more sense. Get that little extra. But I don't think that's gonna be your foundation. Yeah. You know? I think it's definitely a great sign though. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. even though even though the pump isn't the point, yeah. It's a huge feedback mechanism for me because like if you're training back and your lats are blown out with blood. Yeah. I mean, you know you're targeting. There's no, you don't have to like, that's another thing too. I forgot. Here, here, here we go. Here we go. myself. <laughs> <laughs> I see guys, I see guys with great body parts. Yeah. Great body parts. And they're forcing themselves to change how they train because they don't think they train correctly. They think there's a better way to train. Uh, but you see a guy with like a great back. Yeah. And he stops doing what he did to get his back, and he's like concentrating on all these like, like you know, all the real technical stuff mm -hmm. that's in fashion right now. Yep. And I just think like you know, like this allocation of your time. Mm. Is, yeah, put that into your terrible biceps. Put that into your biceps <laughs> that need work or whatever. Like, there's nothing wrong with how you're training your back. You know, yeah. like, and there's also an interesting thing. Uh, I've I've seen this put out a few times. Is biomechanics for hypertrophy overrated? Like, we know that it's important for performance. Like, if you're trying to do an athletic task, like jump over a bar, right. yeah. then your mechanics are everything. Right, sure. <clears throat> but if you're just trying to stress a muscle to fatigue, are we overemphasizing form? Because, you know, it would explain all the guys that don't pay attention to that stuff. Yeah, it really like, would. Like Johnny and Branch and yep. it, it, like they're just like overload. Yeah. Overload. Or is it harder than last time? Are you pushing the muscle past last time? All this minutia about constant tension if there's a millisecond where there's a lack of tension on every third rep, is that really the difference maker? Right. Yeah. Look at this guy. So he always says we don't there's always a guy showing his nipple. Always one. You know, so are biomechanics <laughs> actually overrated for hypertrophy? Are yeah. we? Are we? Is this a, a big circle jerk that we're all doing with our elbows and wrists? When in reality, what feels good for you? Just grab that bar, pull mm. it, get that elbow back. Is your lat contracted? Yes. Do yeah. it a hundred times. Is it stretched? Is it contracted? Yeah. Do that a bunch of times so you can't do it anymore, and then do it again in five days. Yeah. And then do it again in five days. That's is that simple. really what it breaks down to? Well, that's what DC was make... built on. Yeah. yeah. That's literally how Dante built DC training was throw away, like he always used to tease about the pinky twist and all this stuff yeah. with the pink dumbbell. He's like, if, if it used to be a 40-pound dumbbell, and now it's a 60-pound dumbbell doing the same thing for the same reps, I bet your arm is bigger. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know. And I and and I I think that mechanics. I think that if you follow that argument, biomechanics are only as important as your injury to risk ratio with what you're doing. Right. That's yeah. that would be the the decider. Is what you're doing, like, is it safe? Okay, then keep rapping. You were you gonna know? add something, Scott, and I'm yeah. not letting you escape. Um, I think that if you were to listen to just that basic stuff, there would be a lot less Instagram videos. Right. It you would hurt the content volume. <laughs> I really You're do. killing my content, Content bro. volume would yeah, be hurt. I really do. I really do. And Dave Kalick always uses the term, like, it's not sexy. The stuff that really works yeah. is, it's just not sexy. It's basic free weights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's the stuff that we knew, that, like, the first week we were training. Yeah. You know, those exercises, right. the barbell row, the pull down, the bench press, you know, or some variation of bench press, yeah. like dumbbells, you know, squat, leg press. Oh, I, I watched a great uh, video the other day about, about the 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 overemphasis of of uh see boobs on the glass i told you guys <laughs> hey, the other guy the, gave us a full full nip no. <laughs> it was a nipple the other guy had a nipple on the glass all right dana wins what was i talking about you got I, boobs on the glass it's i guess i guess uh, yeah. it was uh saying that you know we, we're putting way too much thought into exercise selection as well there's obviously exercises that aren't as good because they're like only hard at the contraction and the bottom third of the rep is just so easy like those right, exercises yeah, yeah. aren't aren't going to give you the bang for the buck but as long as an exercise is a good full range of motion we're way over emphasizing exercise selection because the muscle just is the muscle doing what it's supposed to do is that joint closing and opening yeah, yeah. right that's really what it comes down to you know Ooh, we got a follow up for ron uh let's see Speaking of uh, Ron during a breakup, what did he listen to during that time? Okay, I just got to think of what year that one was. I got hosed in different area codes. <laughs> yeah, oh. <laughs> I got into a real hip hop phase for a little while there. <laughs> just all of a sudden, I was listening to rap. Oh, look at his picture too. Yeah, it's it's the, the Justice, fan. the Justice yeah. cover. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think. Well, well, let's give us go younger Ron. What would yeah. be, you know, go to, well, go to I, breakup music? Yeah, well, I'm just, I don't know if I'm a breakup music type of guy. I'm just trying to think of what I was listening to in, in that year, you yeah, know? He, he skipped right through. He was just angry. He went to the gym six times a day. No, he's here right now. We got a, we got a question. Did the giant not make it? He's, the giant did right make it. out there. He's downstairs filming oh, right oh, now. I thought you yeah. he was, like, behind no, us. No, not literally. No. Like, oh, yeah. You would he's have filming. seen a shadow yeah. if he was behind us. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's here. He's here. He's just not sitting amongst us because he doesn't fit in the screen. There's no room. There's no room. No, no. he's he's Just changing like, out all the new hoodies we got and all the new tees and all the new knit caps and he's down there doing all this video. Yeah, signing autographs at West the Coast guy Iron. The pretty stuff, you know. Yeah. Simple. Yeah, crazy. So you can't think of uh, the music. Well, I know for a fact that uh, that particular breakup was 2006. So I know I know the Foo Fighters had just come out with their double album yeah. in your honor, which oh. was one of their best albums. Uh, the first disc was amazing and I know that that album was on massive replay at the time because I just remember the year yeah I just can't believe he remembers that so probably that well I know that album was in the rotation it was in the, it was in the mix it was yeah. in the rotation oh, right. let's see it was uh, the, yeah it was, it was 2005 no. 6 so yeah right around there what about uh, over under I can't really answer this one so much edibles, edibles. and this is Kirill what's up Kirill Hey, Kirill. Why don't you ask Jamie about that? <laughs> he, he, he actually, so, you know, I had him take 30 milligrams, but before bed. Yeah. You know, not a ton. Yeah. So he really liked it. And Jim, the boss, was, was against me suggesting 30 milligrams. Yeah. He was against me getting us. Sorry, he was <laughs> us. Jim tends him. to th generally think of us as kind of a bad idea to begin with <laughs> so so jamie did 10 milligrams at home and stayed awake and quickly understood why 30 was not a great idea yeah and i disagree 30 is where i started i think that's where everyone who's over 250 pounds should start okay yeah he's that's, a big guy does that make a difference i don't know if it does at all but it's how I well it. tolerance <laughs> is a big factor <laughs> probably doesn't actually mean anything but in my head i was like why not I don't want to throw anybody in the bus under the in bus. the bus. Yeah, or in the bus. In or the, bus. the bus. I want to be in the bus. He's not doing either. So I won't mention who it was, but somebody yesterday had mentioned a 250 milligram gummy or edible. Wow. 
and having like, yeah yeah that and, and they alive like, not go, wanting to come out for a little while for yeah like no you're period. like you're like staying home that's a real commitment that's you're, a lot huh? you're home for the day and the night like you're not yeah. like you're gotta, possibly wondering where your life is going during yeah that and yeah. if you plan to do anything like order food or anything like that you should make sure you like have money set out so you don't have to try to figure that <laughs> <Take> out this. <laughs> yeah. you know We're like you should side. be prepared i i'm actually gonna say I mean, here's here's uh, I'm, I hardly ever take edibles. Like I've only had edibles a handful of times in my whole life. Yeah. But I'm gonna say they're underrated. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That sucks. They're a good time. They're just too much of a commitment for me. I, I got too yeah. much shit to do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going. I'm going overrated. Really? Okay. Because I got lost in my neighborhood. That was. A <laughs> yeah. You see, that's the part I like. It was a tough situation. <laughs> that's there. my favorite part. Yeah. See, because, but I compare. Here's the problem. I start comparing things. Uh, I look and I say, edibles versus mushrooms. And now uh, I don't yeah. need edibles at all. I oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Off the yeah. table. Just uh, go to the mushrooms. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Everyone should do three grams of mushrooms twice a year. Just saying. So those are legal in uh, Michigan or in Ann Arbor now. They're like, like illegal. Yeah. No, legal. 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 Yeah. yeah, yeah. I assume they're legal everywhere. Well, how else are they getting them? I, I had a Anyways. good experience with mushrooms. <laughs> See? Yeah. yeah. This is back before I was in recovery and all that. But I was in uh, New Mexico, and I had gone through a breakup. And I was dealing with figuring out a few things in life. And I thought to myself, you know, a friend of mine, she had picked these mushrooms. She knew where to go up in the mountains. They were That's like, amazing. So they were like straight from a hippie. Yeah. They had to be good for you. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. She... Uh, she said, "You should only. These are strong. You should only eat one stem and one cap." Right. And she gave me a handful of them. That did not happen. So I ate. I ate the handful. That a boy. Them. And this was at a place called White Sands, New Mexico. It's a desert. Sounds nice. It's. You saw the movie. Topical. The, did you see the movie uh, The Doors? Yes, of course. You know where they did the whole peyote thing? Yeah. That, that's White Sands. Oh yeah. So it's just like it's interesting because the sand is made of gypsum. Which is like what they make talcum powder out of. He knows that, but go ahead. Yeah, I'm sure he I did. I don't. You know, I was telling you. I was telling you. <laughs> and so I, I ate the edible, or I ate the the uh, the mushrooms, and I sat on the first hill, and I sat there for I don't know how long, but it was a good long while. This was like 6 a.m. Were you pondering life? Well, I was deciding was well, what, what am I going to do here today? Yeah. And I had a Camelback with me, filled with three liters of water. It was going to get really hot that day, and I had a Gatorade inside the backpack. And then I had a poncho, and I used to wear a cowboy hat, like a straw cowboy hat when I worked out there. Yes. Yeah. So, and then I sat there, and I just waited. And after a good little while, this crow or raven came by, and it, like, circled over me. And then it landed on a hill that way. Did it start talking to you? No, I was like, okay, so that's my, that's what I'm supposed to do, walk that way. Right. And I looked, and there's normally there's a trail, and the trail works by, they have, like, these big rods that stick 10, 15 feet out of the ground. And they're colored, bright colored. So you can see the next one as you're walking and you know how to walk your way back. Well, they were going off that way. like I And I went that way. And I just looked and I was like, okay, so if this mountain comes here and this mountain comes here, I'm just going to walk to that peak. Like I want to walk that direction. And I'll, I'll follow my footsteps home as long as the wind doesn't pick up. This is a terrible idea. Go ahead. <laughs> And I walked for about five hours straight in one direction. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. And, and nothing really, like, came to me. I thought, like, I was going to have this, like, this epiphany. You didn't something. have your Homer Simpson moment? Yeah, yeah, you know. And so I, I eventually, and it got hot. It was, like, over 100 degrees out in the sand, I found out later that day. He's dying. Yeah. Well, I brought plenty of water, you know, and I had the poncho. I had the hat. Sunscreen, gotcha. And uh, I turned around, and I was like, okay, I'm going to walk back. And thankfully, the wind didn't pick up because, I mean, I was way out there. And I, like, I started finding things out there that, like, out of pieces, because it used to be a missile testing site for the, the military. And I found, like, pieces of shrapnel and stuff. I brought a few home that I found, like, small ones. But, like, stuff I don't think other people have seen, you know? And uh, the, the, the lesson was that, you know, I thought I was walking in this straight line, but on the way back, the path would curve like I would see a bush over there and so I'd go and look at that bush or you know it'd be easier to walk around this hill and so it was like this this moment I had because I'm looking at the path and my path was anything but a straight line I was like 
this is the way life is. You know, and I, I just had this sense of peace. Yeah, yeah, And I yeah. went back home, and I had heat stroke, and after that, I was fine. <laughs> I was like, and I was in, a, like, a completely better place. I had You were like, out, there are no straight lines in life. Yeah, yeah, and it's I figured out, like, like, the relationship this. thing. I figured out a bunch of other stuff, and I literally, like, from there forward, it's like I fixed a bunch of things. It was weird. It was the only time psychedelic experience that I had that was, like, a positive one. And it really was really? because you went for a walk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's it's a good one. Stroke in I that. like that, that one. That was solid. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad that the I'm glad the wind I'm really up. glad the, <laughs> you wouldn't be here today yeah. had the wind picked up. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> Your straight line was not straight. <laughs> maybe not. Yeah, it was crazy. There were fire ants out there. I remember finding this like this little shrubbery bush thing. And I was like, maybe I can sit under that to get some you know, so get away from Reprieve. the sun. Yeah. yeah. And there were fire ants under it. It's like so I couldn't even sit under that because uh, the fire ants are crawling on your legs and biting them and stuff. And it was it was a wild it was a wild walk. It it's little. funny how you know you make the story sound romantic with the life lesson. Yeah. But it, then I just step back and I'm like, wait a minute, this sounds like a terrible day. Yeah. <laughs> like you heat got stroke, fire ants, fire and ants heat stroke, carrying a gallon of water <laughs> through the desert. It's brutal. It's amazing how your your perception can be everything. You yeah. Know? And the thing was too, so White Sands was five hours from Santa Fe. So I literally I had a van, I had a full size cargo van that I, I had at the time, and I threw my sleeping bag in the back of the van and I had work that night and then after work I literally just got in the van with my camel back and my, my mushrooms and I literally just drove south. And it, at, like I got out of work at nine ten at night. And I got and I drove straight yeah, at three five in the hours. morning or whatever. Yeah. Oh shit. And there's this uh oh, there's one other thing I forgot. On the way down there, there's a uh, um, a border patrol thing. It's like fifty miles inside of the US because that I think it's I twenty five is like the number one route for like the yeah. meth up and heroin up and stuff like right. that. Right. I probably just got us demonetized for saying those words. Right, 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 right. Ah, yeah, it's, on me. it's on now me. Now I can say fuck again. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sitting there at like literally three in the morning and I pull up to this border patrol agent. And he's like looking at me and talking to me. And I looked over his shoulder and there's this little tiny crappy subcompact car behind him. And all the wheels are pulled off. And there's two guys just pulling bales of weed out and tossing them in a pile. There was like this oh, mountain no of way. weed. Yeah, these they big pulled bales. the car apart right there. You yeah. caught them. Yeah. Yeah. They're, and they're just like, here's another one. Boom. Oh, them in a pile. Yeah, it was a big deal. They didn't have time for you then. They just yeah. let you through. Yeah, and busy. I had like the hand pocket full of mushrooms. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's you so weren't going to catch their eye on that day. Yeah, no, they day. weren't interested in you. <laughs> no, no. All right, what about uh, skull caps in the gym, Ron? I got no problem with skull caps in the gym. Like, well, overrated. Well, overrated? Well, well, what, what, what's a skull cap? Like, is this a, is a toque? Is this a knit hat or is this a skull cap? Or is this skull cap That's like got to be tight with a tie on the back? What about uh, it, just a bandana? Is is that a? Let's go. Let's, do you have to have a long thing hanging in the back? Is that a skull cap or w- w- what's a skull cap? I don't know. Dusty? They're all too hot. That's all I know. Yeah, I, I couldn't I think wear of that immediately when I see that and I see them in the gym. I don't. I'm like, are you hot? I can wear this. I could I could train in this in the winter time. Oh, I, I know that it's not like Canadian winter here. It's just like cool, but it's cool enough that but I couldn't do it in the summer. I have could no you problem wear it on legs. Leg day? No, 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 no. See, back I, day. I can no. wear a bandana on leg day though. I used to wear bandanas on leg day. Yeah, it was 1997. Yeah. We yeah. all did. Roll them up or like over your whole head. Over the whole head. Time in the back. Traditional oh, yeah. paisley bandana. Old yeah. school red paisley bandana. Yeah. The ear yeah, little, I got you. The yeah, ear. a little yeah. bit. Wow, there, my head's a little big. I can't always get the ear in there, but sometimes I'm just tying the t- the tips of the corners together in the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know <laughs> that look. I got no problem with skull caps, yeah. you know, unless they have skulls on them. Nah, that's just too much. You double skull. <laughs> you can't double. Yeah, skull. can't double skull. What about? Uh, we could probably get an update here too. Uh, Jake has another one over and under. But same. Ron's meat. Hey. I think it's so far been underrated. And thank more, you. More of Ron's meat in our life. I want to say uh, thank you very much to the people that reached out and said that they would love to get their hands on some of Ron's, Ron's meat. Ron's meat. Yeah. That's not the official name. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> but uh, the, we, I appreciate you reaching out because, like, you know, we've got this idea with uh, these guys that I'm talking to that have the ability to maybe set up something pretty cool if we want to get a bunch of people ordering. Yeah. So uh, if you miss, if you miss what we're talking about. Um, we're, I'm exploring the idea of uh, shipping out 
pre-ordered bulk beef. So you'd, you'd say you'd order half a cow in the spring and you'd get it in November and you'd save thousands of dollars off buying all of those cuts. You'd have to have a deep freeze and you'd have to be prepared to save a lot of money. Or you could split your it with friends your friends. Could join in. You yeah. could split it with yeah. friends. Yeah. But you could even get a quarter beef, I think, is as small as we'd be able to go. But, you know. How many pounds is a quarter beef? I don't remember all the stats. I think a full beef is like 490 pounds of meat uh, total yield. Okay. I think. Okay. I think, like typical cow. So, that's a lot of meat. Yeah, so a half a cow, I think. But I don't want to misquote those numbers. I'd have to relook. But yeah. well, we do need to get Ron's meat in the United States too, don't we, people? Would you be interested <laughs> in having Ron's meat? Sure, just throw border logistics at me. Just throw that. We're gonna get. It's not really gonna be your meat. It's gonna be my friend Duke's meat. But we're gonna call it Ron's meat. There you go. Because Ron's meat sells better. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Listen. So, so if you want Ron's meat in your mouth and you live in the U.S., comment below. Well, <laughs> hey, let's definitely hear from you if that's a thing. So yeah, I, a half cow is between. 200 and 225 pounds. Yeah, so a full beef would be about 480, 500, yeah, 500 pounds. Possibly yeah. 500? Possibly 500, yeah. yeah. Depends what, how much lot. trend they give it. Yeah, it depends you know? on the trend. Will yours have more trend? We can't tell yeah, you that. No. We can't tell you that. You know, the Colonel's not going to give you his 12 <laughs> herbs and spices. 11 <laughs> herbs. herbs and spices. Herbs. See, that's the thing. They got 11 herbs and spices. They don't tell you. There's actually only 10. The 11th one is some trend. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's why no one can crack the code. Yeah. No one can figure out the KFC recipe. <laughs> one pellet there per was. chicken. One pellet per chicken. <laughs> <laughs> that's why his are thicker. How about uh, growth hormone, GH? Is it overrated or underrated? I think we've done this one before. Yeah. But I GH say I say overrated for the vast majority of people. Agreed. Yeah. Vast majority of people will never notice where that money went, other than it's not in their bank account anymore. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would go with that. My short answer would be for the vast majority of people, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Are you Brandon Curry? Yeah. No. If you're Brandon Curry, <laughs> if you're competing <laughs> at the Olympia, then yeah. definitely invest. Um, and we did talk about Sean earlier. I mean, we, we were he saying. He did a long time ago. Top five. Did oh, he? different Sean? Oh, my bad. Yeah. See, I'm looking at the spelling there. <laughs> See, that's what technically, that, means. Oh. that Sean did win. Technically, yeah. <laughs> technically, <laughs> it, yeah. Technically, they spent. That. Yeah, it should be S H A. He won the first one. S H A U N. Which one did he win? Which one did he win? Well, he won two, but they took the first one away because of the drug test. So which he come is back oh. the following year and win it again. Remember, wow, ninety ninety one. Everyone yeah. loves Ron's meat. I agree. Yep. I had some girl who was putting her tits in the window that loves his meat. I saw her. Well, she's had a lot of it, that one. <laughs> <laughs> she's had a lot of it. Do you guys have any, any final questions? She had here? so much of my meat, she went vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, enough is enough. I need a few years off. The Trend Twins. You guys know who the Trend Twins are? Oh, so someone just told me about the Trend Twins the other day. They said it's these two young kids on YouTube that... I don't know if they're actually twins or they just kind of look the same. They just have the same haircut or whatever. But they're twins, but to call themselves. And they're super young, like 18, 19, and they're, they're loading the trend and they're talking about it. Like how okay. they're on the trend. We're on the tr trend. Wow. Trend life and all that stuff. Do they have ramen stuff. hair? Do they have what? Do they have ramen hair? You know, the What's ramen hair? You don't know what ramen hair is? Walk outside your gym. They're out there, I promise. Is the kids like with the, the fucking curly hair that... All looks a mess. Or is it just I American think they thing? might have that. They have the ramen head. I knew they it. Might have. I that. can see that. I yeah. didn't know it. Anyways, I haven't even looked them up, but someone just told me about them the other day. So I'm gonna say they're overrated. Overrated. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I mean, if your YouTube personality is just set up around a, a drug that you take a lot of. Yeah. Sorry for all the pot channels out there. Yeah. Stay, stay tough. Oh, UFOs. Nice. Over underrated testicle size. Oh, my God. That's so easy. Overrated. Totally overrated. Plus, all the girls I know are on the high-protein diet. They want more meat, less potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know where it's at at the moment, but I did see another good one. Uh, the other week, we were talking about influencers. Yes. Uh, and we're talking about like what an influencer is. The question we had gotten was, why, it, why, do, why does the term influencer have a negative connotation? We were asked today, are influencers overrated? Well, I really love Dusty's answer last week where he was like, I embrace the term because it's enabling me to make a living, connect with the people that I want to connect with, do a bunch of awesome things I want to do. So he's embracing the term. Am I misquoting you? No. You're and solid. 
and 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 I was like, that's a good attitude to have, you know. Like the what I love about Gary V is he doesn't bitch about the rules. Right. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't. Does he's he? like, oh, they change the rules mid game. Okay, change of plans. Let's make some money. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's that's his thing. So if they, you know, if a, if 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 you know, I guess the what I'm trying to get to is there's all this negative connotation. Screw it. Embrace the term. I'm an influencer. Look what I'm going to be. Do positive things with this. I'm going to keep it positive. I sort of like yeah. summing up what you said. So, um, but the reason it has a negative connotation is because people think of like the the obnoxious influencer who's just oblivious to how ridiculous they look in the world. You know that influencers in the wild page? Do you yes. follow that? I do not. No. <laughs> influencers, <laughs> influencers in the wild. You got to look that saw, one up. Who was it that? The, the, was it the Facebook guy, or Zuck, Zucker? Who was who did a picture for that? Who was? Yeah, who, Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg sent, sent it in. It. Yeah, yeah, where yeah, he's in yeah. the pool and he's like, yeah. I think you told me about that. I actually posted that. On yeah, the that show. was a good one. Yeah, but he yeah. sent that to them. Like the ultimate influencer in the wild shot was him, like doing a, a selfie in the pool, right? But that that's a funny one. You look at them and they're like, you know, will be some some influencer standing in a crosswalk, doing some silly dance with you know something blowing over their head. And traffic is waiting for them. Yeah, completely oblivious to like, anyone else. Like, they're just completely oblivious. Yeah. They're holding up everybody else, and they're just, ah, you know. And it's just that sort of how the world sees, like, that's the image of the clueless influencer that has no idea that they're a pain in the ass for everyone <laughs> else around them. And, 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 and that's why people, they see... That's why the tripod in the gym has such a negative thing. People see a tripod in the gym, they're like, "Oh God!" You know, yeah. like it's, and uh, and of course, it ruins it for the people that would know how to intelligently use one. Like, sure. if you set it up in the middle of the dumbbell area on a busy Monday and just I'm recording my sets. Yeah, it's like, do you not understand where you are? Yeah, you know, and that's what that's the that's what people think of when they think of an inf influencer. Now, it's kind of you know. Throw shade on everyone who's actually just being an influencer and, you know, doing the promotion that they're, they're supposed to be doing. Am I saying too much, Dusty? Cut no. me off any time. No, I think it's, you, you nailed it because I think what people Dusty, forget you're, is... Dusty, you're here to stop the, me from over-talking. The over influencer has been around forever. Yeah. Why is Tom Brady yeah. promoting whatever? Because yeah. if he says it's good, more people will buy it. The end. Didn't Michael Jordan sign his Michael first Jordan Nike contract Nike planet. dwarfed his Bulls contract? Yep. You know? Really? I think his first Nike contract was like way bigger than his Bulls contract right off the bat. So it was like he was set for life on the first Nike contract, you know, Good like, God. you know what I mean? And that was like the original, like, hey, him and Bo Jackson, like, remember those influencers back in the day? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Nike exists because of him, essentially. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. At that level. What else we got? We got anything else good? Uh, yeah, we need we need like a good finisher, guys. You guys should uh, a send finishing us some, move. Yes, yes. We need a finishing move. We got some movie questions from the Juice Goose. Um, he said the uh, Juice Goose. Yes, overrated is loose. <laughs> uh, overrated, underrated. Shawshank Redemption, The Green Mile, and Trent Ace. Oh, that's that's a good combo there. <laughs> Scott, you have to answer one of those first because you never answer first, or you don't answer at all. Oh, We're that's dra not true. I'm dragging that's not you true. in. But I will say this. Not I'm, accurately. I'm trying to focus. Oh, wow, we just got another super chat. I'll pull that up in a minute. Um, it, it, it's hard for me to think and also read, so I'm trying to feed you guys, keep well, things going. Well, like, that's why I need you to answer when you're okay. not thinking thoroughly because then we look smarter. Well, I haven't seen <laughs> Shawshank Redemption. I don't remember seeing. You haven't seen. So, so let me just. You have to stop up. the show. <laughs> so, you haven't seen the Shawshank Redemption lately, or or yet. Yeah, this is correct. Uh, you also or never ever. seen it. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, okay, Did okay. I mean, okay. I'm not. Like we're not good friends. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not done here. <laughs> and you haven't seen what else? <laughs> okay. I may also not have any experience with one of the other two of these three things. <laughs> <laughs> and it ain't Trent Ace. <laughs> Wow. Surprisingly, I've done okay. trend. Okay. Yes. Okay. I know trend. So obviously, Shawshank is underrated. If Scott here Scott, has not known that I he have needs one thing to, to say to you. It. 
You got to get busy living and get busy dying. <laughs> Which may or may not be a quote from Shawshank. Is it really? Yes. <laughs> so you got to get busy living or get busy dying. Because this, wow. this is this existence where you just sit we, neutral and don't watch these movies. Don't watch just, it's a pointless. It's just I can't even write When did, when did that right come now? out? Oh, what? Like 90-something. Dude, how is that possible? 90-something. Yeah. It's long enough ago that it would be, oh, it's an old movie, probably dated, I won't watch it, right? Yeah. It's hit that, that stage. How many times has it been on the screen at your house when you were surfing and you just skipped it? I don't know. Scott, I will stop if that movie is on television, if I happen to notice, and okay. watch it till the end. What so, year? What year is it? The movie came out in 94. Yeah. I'm going to put myself in where I was. So the same year as Pulp Fiction. That was a crazy mental year. Did you yeah, watch Pulp Fiction I w- that year? Of course year? I watched that Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Yes, you needed yeah. to. Yeah. Go ahead. Of course, ni- uh, 94, Kurt Cobain also died. And First, Forrest Gump won the Oscar for Best Picture. I did see Forrest Gump. I did see yeah, that. I believe. Yeah. But yeah, My so friend I was him, busy. But anyways. Wait, what? He trains Forrest Gump. I mean, not like the actual Forrest Gump, but a guy that's just like him. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Daniel. <clears throat> yeah, so that I don't have any uh, feedback on, on Shawshank Redemption or Green Mile. I, uh, I don't. Were you? I didn't using watch a lot of drugs at that. Not point? at not at that time. No. So what is your excuse? I was trying to give you an out. I was I watched uh, cult films stuff like that. So that's why I was thinking about starting a cult. Anyways, not we'll that, talk about that kind later. of cult. Not that oh. kind of cult. <laughs> Mm, anyways, Ron's really uh, uh, he's, he's well, going he's deep here. Freaking broken right now. You can't believe that your uh, f- his friend. I melted everything down here. I, uh, Is I'm anyone else shocked? Okay, sorry. I was gonna say that the Shawshank is overrated, even though I think it's one of the best of all time, just because everyone says that. But now I can't because Scott hasn't seen it. How have you not seen the? Oh. Anyways, Trent Ace is fantastic. All right, moving on. Um, <laughs> Did Shawshank Redemption win any Oscars? <laughs> Wait, did this just happen? <laughs> did this funny. just happen? How are we married? <laughs> Victoria, that's her. That's. <laughs> did you see that, Ron? Victoria and I are connected on something. There's finally something where we have the same understanding of a, of a subject. That's pretty funny. <laughs> that's classic. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Well, I guess we have to watch a movie. Uh, what I get. We on. know what you're doing on Wednesday. Got it. Yeah, it was nominated for Best Picture, Best Actor, Best Writing. Every blah, 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 Shawshank blah, blah. Redemption. Yeah. yeah. Okay. One well, you yeah. haven't seen. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. But Forrest Gump won the Best Picture, and it was 95. Came out in 94, oh, 90, but it was in the okay. 95 Oscars. Yeah, yeah. Forrest Gump won Best Picture, but... I'm not at all. And, that was funny so enough, okay. Shawshank Redemption is voted the Best Picture to not win Best Picture of all time. Really? You well, haven't seen it. Yeah, I didn't watch a lot of... So I started around that time only seeing movies that they played at, like, the college theater. You know what I mean? Right. Like, movies that would not be mainstream. And if people were talking about it mainstream, I was like, I don't want to see this. Yeah, fuck mainstream. I saw... I saw You're one of those. Uh, one of those. Oh, yeah. I went, you know, and then I went to art school and stuff. So I saw Pulp Fiction, and literally that changed my life. Oh, and yeah. I was like, oh, I'm never going back to this theater again. I'm going to go to theaters that would play more movies like this. Right, right, right. Because this is the only yeah, one that yeah, made it yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, You know, for real. So yeah. I was like, I'm going to go see a bunch of other hey, stuff. I have to say something about The Green Mile. Fantastic yeah. movie. I actually, I'm not a big book reader. Like, I'm not the type of guy that reads a bunch of books. But I read the book, The Green Mile. I was living somewhere. I didn't have a lot going on. I was like, I'm going to get a book. And uh, I got, it's Stephen King. It's yeah. about this big. It's very intimidating. But I thought, I'm going to make myself read a book. And I bought The Green Mile. Yeah. And I read the whole thing, probably the fastest I've ever read a book. Really? And I thought it was absolutely amazing. Like, I just was, I was telling everyone, like, I just read The Green Mile. It was so good. Like, I can't believe it. I was, like, so excited to read again. And then the next book I tried to read sucked. And I was like, ah. Yeah, that was the end. Like, it was <laughs> just funny. But then a couple of years later, when I went to the theater to see The Green Mile, I had that moment that I hear book people talk about, you know, the real cork sniffer yeah, book the people. Yeah, book was better. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I had the yeah. moment where it was a magic moment as the characters were introduced. I was like, wow, this is perfectly cast. Yeah. Right. Each one of these people is exactly how I envisioned them huh. and how they sound. And I want to punch that guy in the face. Yeah. <laughs> And that, that guy's yes. amazing, and it was just cast so perfectly. Like the way it was written, those characters were perfectly captured. It was Green Mile was a great movie. 
Doug, you haven't seen it. Doug Myers also added. He said, "I've known Scott, known Scott long enough to assume he hasn't seen <laughs> insert, insert movie, movie here. here. <laughs> More T-shirts coming soon. Yeah, coming soon. Yeah. Oh, that's freaking phenomenal. Have a list of movies on the back, and then like yeah, like movies Scott hasn't seen. Just a long list." Let's see. Oh, in Victoria adds Scott or Dusty. Uh, he thought he was too cool for everything. Yeah, during that watching black and white art films yeah, and yeah, French exactly. horror what movies. Doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's doing something. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> I see that. I All see right. that. I don't see anything else that's that's a real showstopper here. So that that might have been our showstopper. That, that's I okay. We I just realized now we almost powered through two hours live, which is wow. Not, so we've never done two hours live before. No. Like that's mind boggling. Yeah, to usually me. we cut it in an hour. You yeah, know, we cut it hard in an hour. Yeah, and we've maintained over 160 people for literally this whole entire time. Yeah, you know, yeah. people logged off when they heard you hadn't seen. Shows yeah, we yet, lost ten. At like that point. ten, yeah, they yeah. actually unfollowed. Yeah, the, the, uh, a couple <laughs> thumbs down. A couple you know, thumbs down. Yeah, yeah. I see Blocks. three. Yeah, there's three, three thumbs yeah. down. <laughs> Those all hit at yeah. one time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like four, five, six. All of a sudden, they start dumping. That was Victoria three times. Yeah, yeah. probably. <laughs> She's. I give her one. I give her one of those. <laughs> Absolutely, give her one of those. Yes. So, okay. Thanks, everybody. Remember. Well, like well, wait, oh, wait a second well, because we're we're leaving they're going to their lives but we're not really going anywhere we're right we're here we're, we're here keep it going yeah this is all happening now yeah what's like what's this i because i wanted to ask you guys like what is this week going to look like now dusty's in town well i'm in town till wednesday but you guys are doing something all right week. now i'm gonna shovel a meal no, yeah. we're gonna go across the street and shovel meals. You just don't know yet. No, I'm gonna. I gotta. I, I, I gotta train pretty soon. Like we're gonna. We're gonna eat and then we're, we're gonna going train. Across the street. I okay. gotta train with Jamie today. We're gonna film a workout for Mutant. Nice. Yeah. And that's my plan for the day. And then I'm done for the day. Then okay. I've got some clients. We. I think we decided to do shoulders. Okay. Nice. It's an so, easy um, one, right? Well, I'm, how my week works out, I gotta film almost every day. So I gotta oh. kind of plan this. And you know, my quads a little bit. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do quads 100. percent So okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to rig things. Yeah. So we'll make it work. But yeah. We got mutant. We're here all week, so you know. And what are you doing, Dusty? Like what? whether it be training or f- pictures or whatever, because we all have the new gear yeah. coming out. Um, I'm going to drag you across the street to my favorite little steak and rice place. Okay. Where we're going to go eat because I didn't make any of my food yet. Yep. And the big thing is, is while you're here, we're going to try to keep it all live so people can come around for the show. Yes. You know, That'll there'll be, be some fun. smoking on the patio later of <laughs> multiple types. Um, that's coming of for Canadian sure. cigarettes. Yes, Canadian cigarettes, and I brought some uh, <laughs> not so American cigars. And okay. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's okay. that. I mean, okay, super fun. So videos, hippie, content, all hippie that weed, stars, hippie all weed, and communist cigars. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I got to meet George downstairs, one yeah. of one of your members. Yeah. Oh yeah. The guy, guy who said yeah, that we were he's like great. Johnny Carson. He's great. He's he loves the show. Him. He lies. Yeah. Love yeah. Him. yeah. yeah. He, right he wants to meet you. He said he wanted to get a picture with all three okay. of us. Nice. Okay. We can make that happen. Yeah. And obviously, if uh, anyone sees us at the gym this week and yes. wants a photo, that's awesome too. You know. That'd say be great. hi. Yeah, I'm, say I'm hi. excited to be here. Make sure Scott. Scott actually likes people generally. You know, he's like he's like a people person <laughs> so it's good you could stop him and talk to him anytime I'd be happy to yeah you know yeah and, i'm always uh, excited to meet people that like enjoy our shows and, and they always have cool stuff to say about you guys and, yeah you know all our interactions i, I also i know it's not written on the schedule i know it's not on the schedule but um i want to bring everyone down back to the dinner we're here working all day and filming yeah but i want to bring everyone back one evening just for like a quick little you know stop just to see them because i've had a lot of people that are like i train at night and i work all oh, day oh yeah yeah i'm not gonna get to see jamie i'm not gonna get to meet dusty yeah. um because you guys are filming during the day but i'm there at seven every night you yeah. know so i think we'll get the crew to come down maybe wednesday night at like seven before that's we go like, eat or something that's like when all, all the like the your average bros are getting off of yeah, work that's bros. like the hardcore that's a hour. Real bro bro crowd you yeah know? that's like the hardcore hour. a lot of yeah. lots of butts and bros around yeah. 6 30 p.m on a on a weeknight at yeah. west coast iron so yeah. so come on down and uh remember mutant nation i am mutant.com you know setting this all up making this happen thank you very much for the support go to imutant.com use your code bigron20 dusty20 and uh you get to get yourself 20 percent off and uh we get little gold stickers and uh, everybody's happy and remember like share subscribe comment and ring the bell there we go building see you guys